It is another long awaited edition of the On the Mic podcast. Like I, I did a podcast with a good friend of mine, Mike Finch, today to complete ownership of my lack of production lately. So we're going to start rolling. And who better to start rolling with than the one and only? Listen, we got to like just get right into it. I don't know what the hell you do these days because um, I, I feel like you have 27,000 jobs. Uh, but you know her from SiriusXM. We'll, we'll figure out exactly where she is. Uh, but she's the one and only Kelly Murphy, my favorite person in the world, my favorite person to talk to. Kelly, how are you? What an intro. Like, you never fail to amaze me with these intros the three times we've done this, which it's should be more. We're just not good. We schedule and then we cancel and then we reschedule and cancel. Yeah, we really, I think, for the rest of the year should focus on. Now, we're kind of going to cheat here, but we yeah. we said like late or early this year that we would do pay-per-views. Like, we mm -hmm. would do one every pay-per-view week. I think we should try to close it out this year with that. And then since we're going to do 267, 268 today, we should do a recap of 268 afterwards if you're still alive. Cause, right. I think that's yeah. fair because we did yeah. say that we were going to do pay-per-views to try to get ourselves on a consistent schedule. And, yes. you know, look where that's gotten us. We haven't yeah. done anything yeah. since like, we said that. So, I, I thought we were going to do like a Rogan Shaw thing here. And it's just gone downhill. Very, very. I just think we both hit the bottom oh, no, of board one night. 100% me. No, don't even, <laughs> we don't made, even, we don't made even. like a big elaborate plan of like what we were going to do. Nothing. Yeah, Nothing. it's mainly me. The worst part is we talked about this while we were still working together. Yeah, so it's been, yeah. <laughs> it's been some time. Yeah, it's been about a year. It's been about a year. Um, oh so, God. okay, a lot of stuff happening over at um, Fight Nation uh, mm. on Sirius XM. Where exactly are you these days? I am primarily on Unlocking the Cage with Jimmy Smith. So two to five Eastern, Tuesday to Friday. And then we did just launch a new show, Throwing Down with Renee and Misha. Obviously, Misha Tate, who is very familiar with Fight Nation. And Renee Paquette, who used to host WWE's Monday Night Raw. She has her own podcast now. So the two of them have joined forces. And we have a Monday show with them that I am on every Monday. Yeah, so Monday, every Monday. Throwing down with Misha and Renee. And then Renee and Misha. Renee and Misha. <laughs> I need the order, right? Yeah. Sorry. With Renee and Misha. My bad. So two things there. So sorry, Renee. One, I always think just Misha first, former UFC champion. But two, right. it's like M before R. So like I get it. Yeah. If we did like a podcast, unfortunately, well, you would take the cake anyways. It would be Kelly and Mike. Yeah. Right. It would yeah. be Kelly and Mike. And I'm not yeah. mad about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you're not. I'm sure you're not. But you leave my face off of it. I'll just hold the microphone this way. Um, so throwing down with Renee and Misha. And yes. then we have Unlocking the Cage with Jimmy Smith, Tuesdays through Friday, mm -hmm. 2 to 5 Eastern. Yes. So regardless, I am working Fight Nation 2 to 5 Eastern, Monday to Friday, pretty much every week. There, there you go. And also doing a lot. Of, I mean, getting very, very popular on the Twitter sphere, which I love. And uh, I know your birthday's next month, but like, happy like you month you know i never forget mrs murphy calling you pumpkin so now <laughs> as as halloween approaches I, I have to call you pumpkin uh i and that's not weird at all i swear to god no it's it not, isn't it isn't it's not i i've had i've gotten approval before i try to get canceled because you know how things are in 2021 right so <laughs> very fragile very uh, fragile disclaimer so I, I don't think my mom ever watches my shit so full disclaimer this is completely unedited tonight and because it's mike and Kelly or Kelly and Mike, excuse me. Kelly and Mike. See, you're getting it all wrong. I it's know. Kelly I, I'm screwing up already. But because it is you and I, and because not only do I consider us both to be professionals, I consider this to be a different kind of podcast. We're drinking tonight. We are absolutely drinking. Um, not sponsored by absolutely anybody. So that's fine. Uh, <laughs> one day, one day, if we stay consistent. Right. Not know. yet. I like to look at it that way. Mike texted me. I'll pull back the curtain are we drinking tonight? And I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, why are we even going to discuss? Like, let's just say yes and move on. Like, okay. So to be fair, I did text you that, but mainly because, and uh, anyone who follows me on Twitter at MP2310, Kelly is K Murphy underscore 25. Did I get that right? Just K Murphy 25. No underscore. Oh, no underscore. All right. Just straight across. All right. K Murphy 25. I'm terrible. I've fucked up twice already and I'm completely sober. It's great. This is going great. Uh, but if you follow me now during the basketball season, I'm the most annoying basketball person on the face of this planet. I, t I think I take the cake from Stephen A. Smith. Like, 
Yeah. If if Spike Lee was like a like a real Twitter like Knicks fan, that would be me. Like the way Spike Lee is at the games, that's how I am on Twitter. So part of the reason why I'm drinking to pull back the curtain even more, the Knicks are in Chicago playing the Bulls tonight. It's Joe Noah night. That's great. Uh, oh, I didn't know. That. Yeah, I didn't know where. I'm gonna keep my comments to myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I plan to. Just heckle Bulls fans all night. Like, this is kind of my yeah, thing. Have a night. Wait, I'm surprised. I always actually forget that you're not a Bulls fan. Yeah. So, I grew up in the, like, I was, like, two when, like, the Jordan era was going on. Okay. And then I'll, like, like, 98 when he left, I was, like, all right, well, I mean, whatever. And, like, you're trying to sell me on Eddie Curry and Tyson Chandler? Like, no, mm. thank you. And then I sure. never forget, I, like, watched the game and Allen Houston was just raining threes. I was like, I like this team. Plus, my aunt, who's my godmother, lived in Manhattan, so I was always following New York teams. So I liked there. And then the Bulls brought me in with Derrick Rose because I grew up playing basketball yeah. all my life. That's fair. I went to his games. When I played basketball in high school, um, not that I was any worth of shit, but um, when I was in, my coach tried to have, like, the Memphis Derrick Rose offense because I tried to literally mold my game after him. So I was a I was a Derrick Rose fan on the Bulls, and then when they did him, in my opinion, did him dirty, uh, and then they turned it great. They they traded him to New York. I was like over the moon, but I had already been a Knicks fan. Once Carmelo Anthony forced his hand and went to New York, I was like, this is everything. This I'm is not everything. a huge Melo girl, even though he went to Syracuse, did amazing things. For yeah, Syracuse. that's absolutely terrible. Like that that actually disgusts me. I know, I know, but it's helping with my Laker hate for like that happens now. Oh, so it's just Laker hate. No, I well, no. I'm a Laker hater because obviously I'm a Miami Heat fan. So when LeBron James left the Heat, it was very traumatic for me. So LeBron plays for the Lakers. Jimmy Smith is a Lakers fan. I like to be against Jimmy Smith. I was never a big mellow girl. He's on the Lakers, not a big Anthony Davis fan, not a big Russell Westbrook fan. So they can take their old ass roster and head somewhere else. Um, I- no, so now this is already bothering me. We're six minutes in and I'm bothered. Why are you not a mellow girl? He just like never played any defense, was a big ball hog in my opinion. And yeah. that just wasn't it for me. I was never a Knicks fan though either. So it, it just, it worked out that way. I mean, Melo kind of kickstarted things for me because um, after they won the national championship, which I'll never forget that corner three by Melo, like I was, I forget, I was in like maybe fifth or sixth grade. My aunt mailed me an autographed like Syracuse, like Carmelo Anthony signed jersey. And I was like, oh, this and is my guy. you didn't go to Syracuse after that? No, please. <laughs> We're talking to a guy who's currently not working because he fell off a ladder. I could barely probably walk the sidewalk on Syracuse's campus. All right. So no. And oh, by the way, this happened at Ohio State. So I feel like I should hate I should hate Ohio State for the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean that's easy. Right. Yeah. I, like that's I don't easy. know though. Columbus, very underrated city. Like okay. very underrated. Like if you were like, hey, I want to like run away from everything for a weekend and like have like a, a good sure. trip in like a sneaky city. What's a sneaky city? Columbus, Columbus. top five sneaky city. Like I've never thought about my top five sneaky cities. Like, what I does that even you. mean? I could think of a few. I listen. Um, Boca Raton down in Florida, because you're close enough to Miami, but then you've okay. got like with us being like fight fans, right? Like you can go train, but then you're also in Florida, so everything's. I'm a fight fan. I'm not going to train anywhere. Yeah, no, no, but Get my yeah, if it's kicked. a weekend, I mean, I went there for a week. I got two days of working with Dean Thomas, and then, the and then I partied for the rest of the week, and it was one of the best party weeks of all time. Uh, I feel like Seattle would probably be like a sneaky city, even though it's a major city. I don't think you hear people being like, yo, we should go to Seattle. So right. It's all about what you want to do, though, right? So, That's true. Like, if you want to, like, climb mountains and stuff, I, I'm probably not the person to hang out with, but Columbus – I'll just put it to you like this. Maybe because you went to Syracuse, you, you don't see it. But, like, I didn't go to, like, a big school. And then when I did go to college, I was like, yeah, I'm out. So, like, maybe I was just in this, like, college atmosphere 
Like we all went out for like company. Right, like maybe your sneaky cities are college atmosphere. Yeah, oh, yeah, 100%. You're yeah, filling a void. Yeah, I think that's exactly where I was going with that. I just didn't want to, like I went out. No, on I said thing. it. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate you calling me out. Um, no, I went out. We all went out for a company dinner the night before. And I was like, oh, this was probably the wrong spot to go to. We had like the one 40 year old man who thinks he's like the karaoke god. And then like every college girl who didn't want to go to class on Friday was out and about. And like, I even told, told some people in our circle, I was like, for the single people, for the single guys, I should say, said Thursdays and in college towns, perfect night to go out. Cause the girls who don't want to go to class on Friday and want a three day weekend will be out tonight. Yeah. I was a big Thursday girl, but I also made my schedule so that I only had class in-person class Monday and Wednesday. And then I had online class Tuesday and Thursday. And I had no class Friday. I was a big Wednesday girl. They called me Kelly Wednesdays in college, actually. <laughs> That's all right. I'll say that we can move on. I just wanted to put that out there. I don't necessarily want to spend time on it. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'll save that for later. I will definitely, I definitely need to know about this. But uh, yeah, so coming back to it all, the Bulls are playing the Knicks tonight. You're a basketball fan. I'm a basketball mm-hmm. fan. And usually we just get right into fights. But, like, basketball's here. It's not right. also such a low-key, great Thursday. And maybe it's just a sports person in me. But we had PFL yesterday. We got mm-hmm. a Saturday morning pay-per-view. Um, maybe I'm just bragging right now. But, like, I have zero things to do tomorrow and zero reason to leave my room tomorrow. Yeah. Because I'm hobbling around. I've got Packers, Cardinals. Bulls Knicks like the day no, it's a good football. Thursday it's a good third sometimes Thursday really does miss with especially the Thursday night football game not tonight it's a good game anytime I can watch Aaron Rodgers though I'm happy I don't know about you you have some animosity towards him so even though they're my former employer like I really like Sirius XM really cut deep this past week uh, or last week when uh Tom Brady just threw it out there like uh oh I didn't know he was a part-time owner of the bears yeah. i was like thanks thanks tom thanks and then tom's like hey hey aaron can i get a share it's it's great like these I, we're getting into football now but like these quarterbacks are treating my my team like cryptocurrency like how how much- i mean we're, i do terrible. think that i think justin field is promising i'll start there but obviously right now you know the, it's not like the bears come into town and everyone's you know, shaking, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's Aaron yeah. Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. He's always had success against Chicago. He's had success against most teams in the league. Like, I don't, I thought you were taking it very personally and that's why I chimed oh, in. Yeah, no, 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 no. You were so mad. All right, so a couple things there. One, you can never read my tone over text. That's so that I, I will always, if I ever got taken to court over my text, I'll be like, you can't tell tone. You right. can't tell my tone. So I'll right, just leave right. that at that. But you're like the only person in the world that I would not be salty with about anything. If you were like, hey, killed your family. I'd be like, all right. Like, I don't know what they did, but like, we could talk about it. Like, I don't right, know. Right. Like, hey, I stole your dog. Hey, Kelly, I don't have a dog. All right, well, I stole somebody's dog. They said it was yours. I was like, all right. I think, so what did I do? I, I wrote back and I said, like, don't be salty or something. Yep, yep. Yep. I, and I am also just, Ew, I never uh, use salty either. Like I'm not. That person. Yeah, no, but it's just, you know, you could do that. It's just, you absolutely know you could do it. Just like, uh, what, like two days ago when I was recovered my wallet that was missing for a week, like, Oh, Hey, by the way, now that you're happy, here's some news for you. And just yeah. like you know, just twist the knife a little bit, but, uh, no. So I was definitely not mad at you. My only problem with this team and we will move to basketball is that like at some point, I mean, it's like, you're a Jets fan, though, so let's, let's not act like, you know, we're, you're fucking a Patriots fan and you're talking down. No, well, I'm not out here trashing Aaron Rodgers on Twitter. Okay, my thing is, like, he's just so fucking good. Like, stop. Like He's so good. You know what I'm pissed about? I had a key opportunity to, because, you know, I clip all the, gr- the best quotes I can find and all the funniest shit I can find that's, yeah. like, UFC-related or sports-related. I still have Kenny Mayne in his final sports center appearance going, fuck you, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> and I didn't use it. And it was a missed opportunity. And I had to think about that all week. And then I was like, you know what? Here's the best part. I took the Bears plus 12 and a half against the Buccaneers. 
like a moron, like a moron. And then, yeah, and then life happened. Let me ask you this before we move to basketball. Whatever his name is, I forget his name, the guy who got the 600th touchdown pass. Yes. What would you have done? Uh, we did discuss this on Unlocking the Cage with Jimmy Smith, and I do love Tom Brady, so I know for a fact I would have given it back regardless of a negotiation or what I knew I was getting in return. I couldn't, I don't think I'd be able to fathom Tom Brady being upset with me specifically. I would have given that back, no conversation to be had. And I said only one of three quarterbacks though, him, Aaron Rodgers, and Drew Brees, that would have been my reaction. Anyone else, I'd be like, let's talk. Let's two, talk. two out of three, two out of three are not bad. Uh, no, let me ask you this, they go, sure. we can't just take the ball back. We want to give you something like, what would you like? Like, what would be your negotiation? Like, what would you ask for? if they requested you to ask for something. That's such a good, like in real time, I'm giving the ball back may, and in may, real time. Or, or you give it back and then like, they, they say, hey, like we want to do something for you. Sure. Um, I've so got mine. I guess I've seen that the ball is worth like at a minimum 500 to $600,000. If I would, let's, let's assume I'm a Bucks fan um, and this happens, I would want lifelong season tickets for sure. And to meet Tom Brady. That's fair. That's fair. Right? So I'm going to go way out of left field here with this. And I'd be like, you can keep all your buck stuff. You can keep you can keep the ball. You can keep the jersey. You can even keep Tom. I want Tom to help me meet Mark Wahlberg. Oh, okay. I like that. He yeah, definitely because, could. Yeah, of course he could. Because my thinking is, and this is usually sometimes how I approach the dating scene, go after the friend first get the target second okay i like that yeah good thinking out of left field good. <laughs> it good. Hasn't it's, worked, still, it's still it's still our life. podcast is still kelly and mike regardless yeah, oh, 100%, of yeah, no, no, 100%. i have about one good thing every 17 minutes so we're i'm, I'm good for now um i want to address your carmelo thing though i need i actually need to sure one of the things i think hands down one of the best scorers of all time in nba history but Mello? also Yes, but yes. also one of the most underrated things about Melo's career, which only an asshole like me would like point out, the best guy to have near a microphone in game because the fuck out of here, I got it for every rebound is absolutely amazing. Like Kevin yeah. Garnett vibes to the T. Like I grew up I watching do. Right. No, I do respect Mello and like his scoring ability and all of that. Just because I'm not a huge fan of his, I can absolutely recognize that. I'm not that kind of sports fan, you know, even though I'm still traumatized by what LeBron James did to me, <laughs> I still respect him as a basketball player. So you mean like me, like a guy who can't give up credit to listen, if someone just broke into your house once a week or once a month and just took everything. And then you get it back, and they just took everything. Like, that's Aaron Rodgers to Bears fans. Like, we're like, all right, they're not coming back. We only see him twice a year. And then he's just like, oh, wait, let me just destroy you again. Yeah. And then he said, all Accept my it. fucking life, I have owned you. That's accepted. But scientifically, that's not even correct because he grew up like a, he grew up a Niners fan. So he didn't do anything you're thinking way too literally about this I, I am i am and i don't know you're gonna have no peace with this i know it no peace i really haven't like i really have i i just and i don't relish because and i here's where i'll credit fighting right i truly don't relish people losing i definitely don't relish injuries anymore not sure. that i really did because i got into the media business very quickly and when you work around you know when you work around athletes you're like, yeah, I would never want that to happen to you. Yeah, of course. So I, I don't really relish in injuries. I do relish in embarrassing moments like Emmanuel quickly making Tyrese Maxey two-step onto the floor. That was amazing. They're also college teammates, so it's kind of like a fun jab. Sure. Like, in the moment, I enjoy a good highlight. But my biggest thing about the Bears is like, at some point, stop being a national embarrassment. Like, I don't sure. know if you did. I'm guessing you didn't. Did you watch any of the Bears Bucks game on CBS? No. So my biggest issue with that game was I, we lost to Tom Brady. We surprisingly beat him because Nick Foles was our quarterback last year. And I'm not saying Nick Foles was the reason. I'm saying Brady getting used to a new team was the reason why we won. But sure. 
there were so many moments, Kelly, where Tony Romo, it'd be like third and one, and they're up 21 and nothing. And Tony Romo would be like, I don't know, Jim, if Tampa Bay doesn't get this, Chicago might have a chance to come back. And it's like nearly halftime. And I'm like, but they did it all game long. And I just, you have Aaron Rodgers now make the sound bite out of you. Just like, I'm going to take, as much as I hate him, I'm going to take that sound bite. And when I have children, I'm just going to play it for them. Anytime right. they fight, I'm just going to play it. It is a really good one. It's it so is. good. It's so good. So then you have Rodgers last week, and then you have the national broadcast mocking your team. At some point, the people upstairs, which you in New York, I mean, I guess like since you're not a Knicks fan, you don't really see it. Um, I do feel like the Jets are the Jets, but they've done a lot of like, they'll move people around. In Chicago, whether it was with the Bulls, I mean, they made a documentary about the Bulls ownership. I'll just say that. It's right. the same thing with the Bears. They don't move anything. The, the only thing they do is Aaron can't embarrass us anymore. We got embarrassed two weeks in a row. And now we got the hometown kid Garoppolo this weekend. We might just go 0 for 3 on getting shit on by people who are all used to us. It's it's just, life sucks. Trust me, as a Jets fan, I have nothing better to tell you. Like, literally nothing. <laughs> they lose. I'm surprised they even have one win, honestly. So, I'm going to make this very local basketball-wise, because um, I know where, where you live. Not literally, I don't know your address, but <laughs> I know where you live. Um, yes. How big of a deal is it, one, that Kyrie Irving still refuses to get vaccinated, and two, the Nets are not off to a good start. Like, I'm not saying this as a Knicks fan, the brag in their face, but, like, the truth is the truth. No, it, it's a huge deal. Obviously, KD, Harden, Kyrie all came to Brooklyn under the assumption the three of them would be playing together, gelling together, <laughs> building up this team together. James Harden just said yesterday, pretty much, I'd love to be the guy that puts up 30, 40 every game, but like, I can't anymore. All my off seasons have been dedicated to rehab. So it's like, there's that. Kyrie Irving's not even playing because he decided he was just not going to play the games at home. And then ultimately, obviously the Nets owner said, no, you're not playing unless you can be a full participant, which I get because ultimately you become a, dis- a distraction. So what Brooklyn's two and three now, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. There's only so much that can be done like and I I, it sounds stupid to say but like only so much that can be done when Katie's you know the only one performing at like a high level yeah yeah, it sounds dumb to say because he's so great and like one great player can do a lot but we're in a time with NBA where like super teams are a thing you know what I mean they created this super team for a reason like Steph Curry's playing like lights out for the Warriors but you know he also has Draymond Green who's really really sound defensively too who is, you know, one of the better players in the league. The Nets obviously assumed Kyrie Irving was going to play this year. He isn't, as of now at least. And not only is he not playing, it's become a huge distraction to them. So I don't know what's going to happen. So to me, because I, I can't be professional all the time, this is literally like grabbing a crew and like putting together a blueprint of robbing a bank. And the one guy's like, nah, man, I'm out. And he's like your most important piece. He's like the right. guy who grabs all the cash. And I'm not 100%. saying Kyrie's 100% better than Durant or Harden, but I'm saying he's kind of like that gel that's going to separate the, the court and open up space for both of them. Um, yeah. Not to say they can't create their own shots. They absolutely can. But like, if you've, if you've been planning this for a couple of years, which they have been, and on top of that, think of the Blake Griffins, the uh, Paul Millsaps, and the Marcus Aldridge's who took pay cuts and veteran minimums to come play with you and like and then it comes out that he says it's not about the vaccine it's about the fact that people are losing their jobs over the vaccine sir sir it's you literally just lost yours. You. like I, I i just i don't want to like sit here and shit on somebody's personal decision based on whatever beliefs they have but this to me is one of the most current most selfish things I've ever seen by a professional athlete. Like It's insane. And I'm the same way. Like if something doesn't impact me, I really don't have much of an opinion on it. I know people that are vaccinated. I know people that aren't. Just in this situation in particular, all of these guys signed on to play with this team as a whole. Obviously there's things you can't control like injuries and whatnot. This is something that can be controlled. If he got vaccinated, he's playing. 
maybe they would still be two and three, who knows, but they would at least have the opportunity to gel and get better and just continue to grow together. They don't even have that opportunity. And it's, it's a mess. I don't care because like I said, I'm a Miami Heat fan. I think that only helps them get out of the East. So I don't really care, but it, it's insane. I, when I first read this story, I was almost certain that he was going to get vaccinated. And as time goes on and on, I don't think he's going to. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of the last time we've seen something like this, like a, a player pulling a, a selfish ass move. I, and I want to say it was Rogers, but like in the end, it all worked out. Ultimately and, he showed up, you know? Right. Right. Like, and, and obviously that's, that's two totally different situations. One's medical and, and, and science and, but, right. but like for me, and I, again, I don't know anybody and listen, I've, heard stories of Kyrie Irving I'm sure Kyrie Irving is a great person if you got to know yeah. Kyrie and I know he does a lot for the community and that's all great newsflash though before you try to build him a statue a lot of players do a lot of things in their communities so I can't just enshrine him into the great people hall of fame I can't do it um you, you then you hear the whispers of he's a bad teammate and he's selfish and he's the reason LeBron left and like all this little shit at some point, if I'm in the Kyrie Irving circle, I don't want this shit no more. And, like, I really don't. And, again, bad comparison. I would always think this to, like, a Conor McGregor side. Like, bro, at some point, I cannot continue to save your ass time after time after time. And we'll move into fighting because there is one thing outside of actual fights that we're going to break down that I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, sure. that Dana White said this week. But – I don't know. It's just so embarrassing that, like, listen, I'm a Knicks fan. I'm with you. Like, for me, sure. for me, let Brooklyn shit the bed. For me, right. being ignorant and arrogant and selfish and a little cocky, I wanted to be Milwaukee, Miami, New York, and the Bulls would be right there. But I, I'm cool with those top four. I'm cool with trash talking you throughout the playoffs this year and the regular season this year. That's what I want. I want the Heat and the yeah. Knicks rivalry back. You know, I remember, like, opening night, I was like, Biggest game of the year, opening night, Boston Celtics. And people are like, no, it's more the Knicks and the Heat. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't think you understand how this works. The Heat are there. The Heat are the right. They're, they're absolutely a rival. This is Boston, New York. It's absolutely right. a rivalry. And that was one of the best opening games I've ever seen. It's double overtime. And that so was a good game. The, that was the team game. coming together. I don't want to get hyped after four games or what, three and one. Got the Bulls tonight. They're undefeated, 4-0. Like, it is so refreshing. And you you guys are what? The Heat are 2-1. and one. It is so refreshing. 3-1, and one, actually. I know they had one bad loss. Let's see. I, forget, I forget who it was to. Um, but 3-1, and 3-1. One, and one. We beat Brooklyn one. Uh, last night. Yes. Beat Brooklyn, beat Milwaukee. But I think there was a beat bad Beat Milwaukee loss. bad. Yeah. That was really, a statement. Really, really bad. Um but it's just so nice to have important games four games and five games. And like, it's so nice. And it's rare to see in basketball, which you mentioned the super teams. I'm kind of okay with beating super teams game two into the season. I think it's important. You got to just, it's happening. It's happened. It is continuing to happen. You have to get on the bandwagon. You know what I mean? So that's kind of where I stand on that. But to cap off the Kyrie Irving thoughts, you saw it with Ben Simmons. His teammates got sick of it. Joel Embiid said, I don't care what he does. It doesn't matter to me. The same thing will happen with Kyrie Irving. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. And you know what, though? It's, it's just going to sound so bad. I do feel bad for Ben Simmons. I do. I really do. Like, it, listen, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Good point. And, and I personally know, and I'm very open about it, mental health is absolutely sure. no joke. I, I can absolutely say this, and I will 100% admit that have I used it as a crutch in the past with jobs, relationships, situation, 100%. Oh, sorry, I'm not, my, 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 you know, my, my mental health isn't there, and I, I'm just right. job. So I, I 100, but my only hope, and this is the only thing I'll say about that part of it, is that I really hope it's true, Ben Simmons, because there are days where when I say it, it absolutely is true. You know, we're kind of joking around about you and I doing the podcast. Sometimes I tell you straight up, like, this is why I can't do it. And I told you that like two days ago. Yeah. I was like, I'm not having a good day. <laughs> Gotta push this off. But I just, it's so weird. Cause like for Kyrie Irving, like whatever happens, happens. But for Ben Simmons, no matter if he stays or goes, I want to see him succeed. 
Like he Me was, too. he was like that one guy that came into Philly and then Joel was there and, and then Ben got hurt and like, you're like, damn it. And then he comes in and like, you're like, hey, he can't shoot, but like, he's probably pretty good. And then he's like first team all defense, like three years uh, for three years. And it's like, oh, this guy's really good. Never gets the love. And it's all, as you know, especially in sports, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, and of course. You know, that, that performance in the playoffs didn't help him. But uh, no. we have fights to talk about. Oh, my gosh. Lots of them. of them. First and foremost, I want to start off with, because I mentioned Conor McGregor. Uh, we'll start with Tuesday, and then we'll work our way through the next couple of weeks here. Uh, Dana White Contender Series. I, I'm I'm gonna mess up their their names, so I'll just say the the two. I'll just say two fighters. Um, I'm trying Jimmy to Basharat and Oren yes. Collin. Yes. So he gets called a terrorist by his opponent, who misses weight by three pounds. Um, proceeds to and I'm sorry, who's the guy who won again? Basharat. Oh uh, yes. So he wins. Then Dana White is asked about the comments at the post fight presser after contender series. And Dana says, listen, in this politically correct world, uh, you know, this is one place where, where it's not. And he kind of put it in the sense of you'll eat your own words inside the cage. And like, I want to be like, yeah, you know, I'm with that. But like, at some point, don't you, wouldn't you expect Dana to be like, nah, like, well, we'll stop there. Yeah, no, this this was really bad. And this is something that we did actually talk about a lot this week too on Jimmy's show. Like when the fights ultimately happened and they were over, I think the main thing that people were saying was like, you know, the right guy won. But we we were saying, you know, what if he didn't? You know, like, okay, sure, you don't give him a contract, but why did you even give him the opportunity to fight? You know, like he, Laura Sanko calls making weight the job before the job. He, so he didn't show up to his job before the job. He missed by three pounds. And then he said that, and we actually uncovered like the UFC's code of conduct and that what he said completely goes against it. So it's like, if you're not going to enforce your code of conduct at all, why do you even have it? And it was just a shame. I just, I was really actually upset that this guy was allowed to fight. Yeah. And, but I, so I can't believe, I mean, I guess because they are professional sports you know, organization, they have to have a code of conduct. Yeah. Like more literally, I know they have to have one. Sure, but you know, it's about as you know, whatever. It's the <laughs> it's such a like it's almost an oxymoron, like the UFC yeah. has a code of conduct. Right. Um but that got me thinking. Do you think that it's so hard and I feel like I'm gonna shit on my own guy here, but do you feel like there's time and time again where poetic justice, so to speak, is served inside the cage? Because we look at the most famous example is Connor and Habib and all the shit that he said. And I'll take it a step further. I don't know as someone who's a fan of both Connor and Dustin Poirier, if I would want Connor to face Dustin Poirier again. I don't, I don't think so. But there's a difference between selling a fight, which I think he did in the Aldo days and the Eddie days, but like going after Khabib's family going after Dustin's family, like all of that, just, so do you think poetic justice is a, is a place or the UFC is a place for it to be served? I mean, it seems like you said that happens time and time again, but it sometimes upsets me because it's like, all of these things are happening that shouldn't happen. And luckily in the end, we've seen more often than not that the right guy does win, but it begs the question, what happens when he doesn't, you know what I mean? Like what happens if Oren Collin wins Tuesday night? He's yeah. great. He still got the opportunity to fight. What if it was a great win? He still got the opportunity to showcase his great skills. Okay, he doesn't get a contract, but regardless, he was put on this big platform and got to showcase his skills after honestly messing up two times in a row, back to back within what an hour, each other. Right, even. right. Like it's just like you're. It doesn't set a good precedent. It doesn't even set one at all. No, it doesn't. And I think the problem is that Dana White, and I love Dana White, but I think Dana Me too. White. I think he knows the vehicle he's driving, right? You look at a guy like Brandon Laughlin, who he didn't offer a contract to and has done great things over at PFL. Big shout out to Brandon. But, you know, Dana has said multiple times, like, if I'm other promoters, I'm looking at a contender series. Yeah, then make a statement, Dana. 
exactly Say something along uh, along the lines of you're not a professional you know what i mean but but then like you turn the clock back and he gives a contract to what i think a week before that he gives a contract to a guy who was disrespectful to ufc staff and all this and he's his matchmaker stormed out and like some of that stuff i feel is fabricated i don't know i could be wrong it could have I don't think Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard just threw their shit up and walked out. Right, but, right. But do I think they didn't want him to sign him? Yeah, 100%, I do. Um, so I don't know. It's just one of those things where it concerns me when you say stuff like that because when Dana White says, hey, like, it, ultimately justice is served inside the octagon because it's not. Even with Connor and Khabib, it wasn't because we had the post-fight brawl. Like, we – there's – there's so many things that I don't think were like, especially because we're getting out of this wave of like, we're getting, we're bringing in a new wave of younger fighters, right? I really do feel like we're bringing in a big wave of younger fighters. If they've never been disciplined before and now they're seeing like, they kind of have a free pass. Like now people are just going to go crazy talking shit. And Dana's gonna be like, well, I love it. They sell tickets. That's exactly the thing. And that, I think that was a big driver behind this fight that we said it too on Wednesday that was the fight everybody had their eyes on because that happened and that's super unfortunate with when you have a ton of good prospects going at it everybody was looking at that fight and I'm not even just trying to be like the big moral police I was the same way I didn't get to watch contender series live so I was looking on Twitter at the results but I was refreshing 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 to see what happened in that fight right so it sucks that something like that happened it sucks even more that this guy was allowed to fight. I was hoping that he would just pull the fight. I mean, I, I'm sure I was being naive because it's rare that there is discipline. Yeah. I was hoping that the fight would get pulled and Basharat would be moved to next week. I think next week might be the last week, but moved to next week with a new opponent, which obviously right. isn't an ideal situation for him as he was preparing for somebody else. But either way, I mean, it didn't seem like he cared as was for what he said in his, his post by presser. He was like, said something like, you know, you sign up to, you know, beat me up in front of my family. Like I already feel disrespected by you. He, right. you know, props to him. He was very professional about it from the moment it happened until after the fight. So. I'm just so concerned about like now the box that, that Dana White has opened up by saying that, I mean, we're, I don't know if Dana's got like fatigue from COVID or if he's pissed about Trump not winning the election. I don't know. But like, you let Paul Acosta kind of do his own thing on, on fight week. I don't even want to get into that. We don't have enough time, yeah. <laughs> we don't have enough time for that. But, uh, you know, I think, and I would say, I think Dana does best when the competition is thriving. And yeah. I'll say this. I do agree. I do think Bellator has the best light heavyweights in the world. Prove me wrong this weekend. And, and as you know, being a, a media and journalist major that you are, that's what we call a segue because UFC 267, we do have the light heavyweight title on the line. And uh, Jan Blahovich taking on Glover Teixeira. I mean, father time can kiss a goodbye in this fight. Gr a great story all around. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm an island boy. <laughs> I didn't get to I didn't get to watch that. So I don't even know if I want to know. Can you play it right now? Like well, yeah, I actually I want to do the live reaction. Okay, hold on. You offered it up and then since you didn't watch it, I think like so for those of you who don't know, uh two things. One, this weekend's fights. I feel like I'm giving UFC some some buys here. Uh they start at 10 30 a.m. There's no buys, it's free. Oh well, subscribe whatever. ESPN plus. Yes, if you don't have ESPN Plus, that is all you need this weekend for UFC 267. It starts at 10.30 a.m. on the East Coast, and it is uh, ESPN Plus. It's on Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. So uh, a lot of the masses in MMA media have kind of been passing around this viral video. It's the first, if you're on YouTube, it's the first one. It's like a minute I long. just pulled up what you sent me. Oh, okay, um, okay, hold on. Let me put my volume up. Boy, and I've been trying to make. Oh, I'm an island boy. Hey, I'm just island boy. I'm just island boy. I'm gonna get keep no. that gun. You're gonna keep that gun. I'm gonna just stand at the sign. I'm just a full gazing. I'm like,
this. I'm gonna be out with all graders. I'm gonna be floored all boy. I'm gonna be real down <laughs> top. I'm gonna be on the top. I'm an island boy. I put my vest on, yeah. Like a wild grandma and try to make it to the top. I'm an island boy. I've been trying to make it. I ain't seen it with a gang gang slang. You ain't gonna slang no cane. I'm through the storm, through the rain. Cause we try home like a lion. From the island boy. From the Caribbean. Can't cook it. So I go wild, y'all. I'm an island boy. I put my vest on, y'all. Yeah. If you ever send me something like that again, I will block you so fast. The best part is I sent that to like two of my best friends who also live on the East Coast. And then the, nobody responded, but they continued on with our other conversation in the group chat. And then the next day we all hopped on the Xbox and I was like, I'm really disappointed in both of you. I sent you the hit of 2021 and no one responded. My one friend was like, yeah, because it's dog shit. And if you ever send me something like that again, you're blocked. <laughs> yeah, well, Eddie's in bull shorts, so you should be ashamed of yourself okay i mean but it's such a it sets up like honestly it's one of those things and um we'll we'll keep our kind of preferences to the side here sure. to make matters worse ariel hawani has been singing it all week on his on his show i did see reality. that that like ariel and was the one like going off with it here's the worst part i showed ariel singing it to a female friend of mine and she was like he's got a good voice ariel I didn't hear him singing it. I'll have to watch that. Yeah, no. It's okay. I was like, okay. I was like, that's a friend of mine. Sure. I was like, but I would never be like, Ariel, you, you fucking killed it. Um, right, like, good. Good job. <laughs> um, but I will say, we, we have a little unfortunate news heading into 267 before weigh-ins and all that. By the way, weigh-ins are at 1 a.m. this morning. Um, so Friday morning. Yeah. Oh, my God. They're in, like, six hours? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. So... Um, we will have no Bruce Buffer. He caught yes. COVID. Um, not like I'm anybody worth a shit, but um, I do have a relationship with Bruce. I reached out to Bruce. He said he just finished, uh, you know, 14 days in quarantine. His first four were really bad, he said. He said, but he's ready to uh, get back to roaring at MSG next week. And as somebody who I believe will be at MSG next week, I'm, I'm here to let you know Bruce will be there. I know. I So I saw the news early this morning before it came out that he had COVID, just that uh, Joe Martinez was going to be the announcer. And I was kind of confused, but I was like, oh, you know what? Back-to-back pay-per-views, you know, one's all the way in Abu Dhabi, one's in New York. Maybe, you know, Bruce was just gonna, you know, pick the one in New York, whatever. Then I saw that he had COVID and I was like, oh my gosh, I hope he's all right. And then I saw the news that he's done with his 14 days, all is pretty much well now. Thank God. And yes, I should be at Madison Square Garden. I just, I'm, the tickets are so expensive, but I know I'm just going to buy one ultimately like Friday, day before. Yeah. Or just, you know, use your inner circles. Or just- I'm, I try, I've exhausted my options. It oh. is sold the F out. Okay. Disappointing. How about I this? Know. When they do come to Chicago, you have to make a trip. I'll come. That like that's that 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 would be in the bag. I I would I'll, yeah. I'll let's do it. Record, like right now, like I will. Let's do it. Record. And then or, we can do a I podcast mean, together from the yes. same place. Yes, and I would actually kind of hope if, if Bellator does return, if they did like a really big card, I think I would be like pushing you to come because um, where where Bellator does their fights is fifteen minutes from my house. It's the best. It's I'm down. I've been watching all Bellator like a lot lately so i'm very much down yeah so let's start before we go to like any 267 talk let's talk yesterday right so holy shit ray cooper like (laughs) he was in trouble and then all of a sudden one punch done i was in shock now i know he has the one punch power so that didn't shock me but it just he was in trouble and then that happened so i was like are my eyes deceiving me right now highly disappointed that he had to cut his hair to make the way um i am not a man bun fan but i mm-hmm. can appreciate a man with with good long hair ray cooper was one of them oh um, he too like yeah right he's an island boy island he's boy. an island boy <laughs> <laughs> and like obviously uh, i'm an island girl clearly i'm from long island not, sure but it doesn't hit like hawaii like does like it like if at Saturday at some point I don't get like a Snapchat from you singing Island Girl, I'm disappointed in you. Yeah, my remix. 
Yes. Yes. I need all like 20 second or 10 second remix from Kelly. Um, oh, Ray Cooper the third. Um, Magomed. I hate these names. It's Magomed Magar and Karamov. There you go. You're so much better than me. Um, <laughs> I can't do it. I'm literally like Joey Diaz sometimes with these. Like, I'll just start saying names. And then if, if, you, guys, nice. if you guys don't know what I'm referencing, look up Joey Diaz, Stipe Miocic. It's the greatest thing you'll ever hear in, in the history of podcasting. It's fantastic. Um, the fact that Stipe made a shirt out of it is even better. But anyways, um, Ray Cooper III beats Magomed, and he is now a two-time champion in PFL. Ray Seppel comes out at the press conference and says, I don't know where you guys get your uh, information from. Ray Cooper's not a free agent. And in the main event, we have Kayla Harrison beat Taylor Gordado. Taylor's been on the show a bunch leading up to this fight. I'm a huge fan of Taylor, the fighter and the person. It sounds terrible to say, and I mean this, no disrespect to Taylor. The fact she got out of the second round or the first round, I was very proud of. Like, you know what? Proud. I actually said the same thing. And I'm a huge Eric Nixick fan, obviously, who was right. in Taylor's yeah. corner, one of her coaches. Right. And I have pretty much like full confidence when any of Nixick's guys or girls go out there because I just think he's that great. But tail, no, Kayla almost had a TKO on the ground round one. And I was like, okay, like, I'm not surprised. And then all of a sudden round one ended and I was like, oh, we're going around two. Okay. And then what was it? The minute left in round yeah. two, she got the armor. Yeah. So it was almost two full rounds, which I mean, credit to Taylor for surviving that long because Kayla is just a monster. And that is no disrespect to Taylor either. She had a great run. It's just there's nobody in the PFL for Kayla. No. Uh, well, Julia Budd has entered the chat. Well, now, yeah. She, That's a yeah, good point. No. So I'll say this. If I'm Taylor, and I don't, I don't want to speak for her, I'm kind of just keeping my eye on. Like, she should be back for the 2022 season. She obviously earned it. Told the great story to me about how a conversation with her coaches and Ray Seppo led her to being in the tournament. She was like a last-minute replacement. Um, sure. She obviously made, made – probably the most money in her entire career this year than she's ever had right props to her um but if Kayla leaves then it's you got to think Taylor and Julia Budd are the front runners in that division you you automatically almost have to assume that because they were the I mean Julia just entered but she comes in with a world title you know resume or a world championship resume from Bellator and I don't know she looked good against Caitlin Young but you know, Julia told me, like, she's ready to showcase, you know, inside the PFL. But when I look at what the PFL has done, as we talk about Kayla and Ray Cooper, those are both homegrown talents. And, like, I feel the same way with them as I do with Bellator and, and AJ McKee. Like, Love AJ. Like, they did it. I will fully admit, and you're the only person, I've only had one beer, so this is, this is fine. <laughs> I will fully admit, I was brought to literal tears with the way the crowd reacted when AJ McKee beat Patricio Pitbull in the forum, in Inglewood, in AJ's backyard, almost more because Bellator did it. They got that homegrown talent. They put them the right way. I had to go back. It was an interview like three years ago. AJ told me in Chicago he wanted to be the Floyd Mayweather of MMA. And he's still saying that to this day. Like, he's got, I mean, he has the, on you the personality like, to, this, to do it. Yes, yes, he really does. And, and it's just when you see a homegrown talent in any promotion, and I know he's a wild person, but I'll use Conor McGregor as a UFC one as well. Sure, he had a little Cage Warriors run. But, but newsflash, for those of you who didn't know the UFC before Conor McGregor, they didn't sign Irish fighters. And they definitely right. made a sign a shit ton from Cage Warriors. So, like, when you see a, a talent like a Kayla Harrison and a Ray Cooper with a PFL, and you go, well, if I do the math, they easily both made over a million to $2 million this year sure. with all their fights. And then they get sponsors and all the other, you know, goodie bag stuff. Why would they leave? Now, it comes into a conversation of competition. Everybody wants to see... Kayla fight Chris Cyborg or Kayla fight Amanda Nunes and Dana White has said she should stay there and pick people off and the PFL responded or PFL CEO responded and said you know we 
We know the fighters are the stars, not the promoter. And they have a point. So I ask you, like, would you rather see the best stars in the sport? I'm not talking in the UFC because you know the difference between the people who say, I train UFC, bro, and the people who are like, oh, I've been in MMA for the last 15 years of my life. Sure. Would you like to see the stars of MMA stay with their promotion or if they're like a Kayla Harrison picking off opponents and no disrespect to any opponent that Kayla's ever had, but would you like to see them chase tougher competition? You know, I think it's definitely a case by case scenario because we've been talking in depth about Kayla, obviously, as her free agency was looming and is now here after her last fight with the PFL. And there's not a lot, there's not a lot of depth at 145 anywhere. And she was actually not even fighting at 45, she was 55, right? This yep, whole 55, yep. But she can make 45. And so let's go with that. Like there's not a lot of depth. If she goes to the UFC, she fights Amanda. Let's say Amanda wins. Okay, great. You know, like what, where does she go from there? Let's say she goes to the UFC, beats Amanda. Great. Who, where does she go from there? She goes to Bellator. She fights Chris Cyborg. You're in the same spot, win or lose. You know, I guess you do a rematch and it could set up a trilogy, sure. But there's just not a lot of depth. So Kayla's somebody that I wouldn't mind staying with her homegrown promotion and staying with the PFL and just chasing that million dollars that, you know, she's going to be the favorite every single year unless something crazy happens. She's somebody that I wouldn't mind. And AJ McKee, however, 145 in the UFC is... <laughs> disgusting it, it is insane yeah would I love to see AJ McKee fighting the top guys in the UFC at 145 yes I would but again I do love the homegrown Bellator boy like fully did it. I love that as well but he's somebody that I would be more inclined to want to see him go because of the depth in the other promotions as well whereas Kayla not a lot of depth at 45 anywhere not not really in the PFL either so, or 55 whatever you know I'm just 45 right, right, right. Whatever. no I'm with you not a lot of depth in any of the promotions, which is why I would suggest to just keep chasing that million dollars every year. But I don't know. I mean, what, what do you think? All right. So I'm going to throw out a crazy one and I might clip this for one of our, you know, I like to release clips. Sure. Um, I, I've learned that from a great producer trainer that I had. Clips are important. Uh, <laughs> clips are important. Clips are very important. I am going to go on record and say the UFC may be the worst spot for Kayla Harrison to end up. Sure. PFL, I do think people are so intrigued. Let's use Antonio Carlos Jr., shoe face, who just won the light heavyweight championship yep. uh, yesterday at PFL. Look at him and go, I'd be him in the UFC, or I'd be him wherever. Like, I could, I could be him, and I could be him for a million dollars. I'm going. And yeah. eventually, they're going to continue to attract and attract and attract. And I kind of like what the PFL rebuttal of, hey, we know who the stars are and it's not the promoter. Yeah. And when I look at that, Kayla Harrison could sell ice to an Eskimo. Like that's how oh, she's so is. good. <laughs> on the mic so especially. Good. I listen, PFL, AEW, Bellator. Those would be my top three if I was Kayla, Kayla Harrison. Maybe not particularly in that order. Me being selfish, I would like to see her either go to Bellator or stay with the PFL. I say Bellator because, and I'm bringing up the uh, the rankings here. Um, oh, good idea. Um, I don't have them all in front of me. But in women's featherweight, you've got Chris Cyborg, Arlene Blanco, Kat Zingano, Leslie Smith, Leah McCourt, Sinead Cavanaugh, Janae Harding, Pam Sorensen, and, and that's just the top seven. So, like, could Kayla beat all of them? Sure. Could any of them be Kayla? You don't know. You you really don't know. I think on a I'll really good day. Yeah, really sure. But I'll, I'll go as far as to say, if you told me Leah McCourt, who I think is well on her way to a title fight against Chris Cyborg in Bellator, if you told me a, a Janae Harding or a Pam Source and a true veteran of the sport were going to show up and have six months to prepare for a Kayla Harrison Bellator debut, and it was going to be the biggest payday of their respective career they would 1000 percent show up because of course. in in coming with being or kayla coming over to bellator comes the the kind of idea of philosophy in my mind of hey now you're coming into my promotion 
Now you're coming right. into my world. And, and I think that for all, everybody in the top 10 that I just mentioned, but those specific eight females that I just referenced, if you, if you don't believe that a Sinead Kavanaugh, a Leah McCourt, a Janae Harding, a Pam Sorensen wouldn't rise to the occasion, that doesn't mean they're going to win. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying those who have fought Kayla haven't, but I just think they're so stuck at it's Chris Cyborg's division, Chris Cyborg's division, Chris Cyborg's division. It, it was Chris Cyborg's division for a little while, and then Amanda Nunes showed up. It was no, it's Ronda, true. Like it was, it was Ronda Rousey's division until Holly Holm showed up. So you know, there's always somebody, and I take nothing away from Kayla, but she has such a bright future, and literally anything she wants to do, she's the one. MMA fighter, I would not be upset with if she went to pro wrestling. She's made for it. Oh my God. She's so good. The promos that she even cuts after her PFL fights, I'm like, you belong in pro wrestling. And we've had her on, we actually had her on throwing down with Renee and Misha maybe two weeks ago. And Renee asked her about it. And she was like, no, you know, I just went because Dan Lambert was bringing us. Da, 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 da. I didn't really care. I definitely don't want to go to, to pro wrestling. And I'm like, but you're made for it. Like, great athlete so I know she would pick up whatever she needed to pick up in no time and more importantly than that her on the mic skills are insane and I don't even think she tries I just think it happens it looks so effortless she even had us fooled for a minute that she was writing Dan Lambert's promos she was like yeah I write all those and we all stopped and we were like what and she was like no I'm just kidding but like I have everybody fooled that I do because everyone's obsessed with the what Dan Lambert's doing so right. it would be very believable that Kayla Harrison was writing his stuff too. Like, I wouldn't be mad at all, but I genuinely don't know what she's going to do. I don't think she's going to land with the UFC if I had to make a guess. Yeah. But I can't really say where I think she is going to land between Bellator or stay the PFL. I mean, this is going to move into 268 and we haven't touched on 267 yet, but I'll say this. Dana White should lay his head on the fact he got Michael Chandler in the past 12 months and just leave it at that. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. you know, what's, what's the saying? If you build it, they will come give mm -hmm. her something to work towards because if she beats Amanda Nunes, who's she going to fight? Norma Dumont. Well, that's exactly oh. what I'm saying. And a lot of people were. Upset no, this is like Norma with, Dumont, but. no, of course, of course. A lot of people were upset with Dana's comments about Kayla, which I get it. I mean, they didn't come, they didn't come across very well. But we talked about it on Jimmy's show and we were saying like, there's not a lot going on in the 145 pound division. There's no rankings on the website. Like if Kayla comes in and like I said, fights Amanda, whether she wins or loses, like what does she do next? Like more importantly, if she wins, okay. So now you just spent a lot of money on Kayla Harrison and she has nobody to fight. The worst, the worst thing that could happen is that the UFC would sign Kayla Harrison realize what we just talked about and then they would have to ask her to cut to 35 because at 35 now you're talking Valentina Shevchenko, Nunes, so many fights. And she's a big 45er though you know because she's used to yeah. fighting at 55 and obviously yeah. she can make the 45 pound cut she's professional she's a big 45er so yeah. to ask her to cut to 35 is like right. so now you're taking away asking. now you're taking away her best asset which is her size and, and her power so yeah i personally think if it's not pfl it should be bellator if it's not either of those it should be aew um yeah. or professional wrestling wherever um but let's get into 267 because i do not want to keep you too much longer but um we have jan blahovich glover to share um and honestly kelly i don't want to like pick apart any prelims i will say it's nice that amanda rebus is back those yeah her fights are always fun um, I am, I am liking, uh, Lerone Murphy or Leron Murphy coming in. Um, just kind of going through the card here, but yeah, like, I'm looking so too. really focus on the main card. Listen, Vulcan Uzumir is back. Every fight to me in the light heavyweight division is an important fight because you've got the old ones. Sorry, Anthony Smith. You've got the veterans. I don't want to call Anthony Smith old. Yeah, I was like, my. No, no, I'm not calling him old. <laughs> He's definitely a veteran. Um, I, you've got the veterans picking up the young up-and-comers. And then you've got, like, the middle of the pack 
kind of just like if you would have told me Dominic Reyes was going on the skid after he lost to John Jones, I'd say you're crazy. Uh, you do have your Petra, uh, you know, kind of waiting in the wings. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think any time you can make a statement at 205, like that's the place to be right now. Uh, if yeah, 205 is great. Right. And I think that Magomed Ankalaev has very much title challenger in his near future. He yeah. is an absolute stud. I'm expecting him to beat um, Ozdemir this weekend. I'm expecting him to get into that title picture very quickly. I'm with you. I know we like to make picks. So we'll just, as we break these down, because we're going to spend a little bit more time on 268, I'm yeah. with you. I'm going with Magomed over Uzumir as well. Okay. Hamzat Chemayev, he's back. He is back. Is it wrong of me to say I'm not officially ready for him until he steps on the scale? I'm talking about a guy who had a long-term battle with COVID and wanted to retire. That's a like, good point. No, I don't like, think that's wrong to say. I don't think and, that's wrong to say. Uh, Jinling Yang, or Lee, and I mess this up all the time. Um, you got me on this? Lee, I, Lee Jing Lang. There you go. There you go. Uh, that's what I go with. Also, my word is in stone either. Like, I believe that's what his name is. <laughs> Not I mean, it's an interesting here. fight. For me, more than, like, the physical side of it, I'd want to know, like, all right, Hamza, like, this fight is taking place at welterweight. We've seen you fight at welterweight and middleweight. I'm just going to tell you, watching Paul Acosta and, and Marvin Vittori, and we obviously got to see what happens early next year between Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya. Mm-hmm. I'll just go on record again and say, I don't see anybody beating Israel Adesanya at 185 pounds. I don't. I don't either. I, I really don't. And I'm probably one of the bigger Robert Whitaker fans you will find. And yeah. I don't think he's going to beat Izzy. I, and I'll say this, I'm very excited for people to fight each other and, and work their way to Izzy, but when, when we look back at like a Ronda Rousey when she was running through the UFC and then we watched Holly Holm beat her up and we were like, oh, like Holly's everything was a little bit more advanced than we ever realized. We don't realize how good Israel Adesanya is. And people are going to look at the Jan Blachowicz fight and they're going to be like, oh, whoa, listen, if, if Israel Adesanya would approach the Jan Blachowicz fight the same way Amanda Nunes approached the Chris Cyborg fight, I, I think we'd be talking about a, a two division champ right now. I mean, take nine months to a year off, bulk up, focus on your body, focus on your strength. And, and he didn't do bad. He didn't do bad. He, he was touching Blahovic, but you're talking about going. He wasn't big enough. Ground. Yeah. Yeah. Once it got on the ground, he was dominated because he just wasn't bigger, big enough or strong enough. Yeah. So your so, point is beyond valid. So with that, I, I would say, Hamza, stay at 170. It's yeah. freaking open season and welterweight. I don't care what anyone says. And we'll get into this next, but, like, this Usman Covington fight should not be happening. I'm just going to throw that out there now. So, for me, I want to know – I want to see on Saturday morning, is Hamza Shemaev set on 170, and just how good can he be? Yeah, I mean, he's a huge favorite. I'm looking on at the UFC's website right now. It says minus 590 to Lee Jing Lang's uh, plus 425. Yeah, that's, so. that's big odds. That's big odds. That's um, big you know, odds. we thought – we thought he was just a wrestler and then he fought Gerald Mearshart and that was bad. Um, mm-hmm. I am going to go with Hamza, but for me, I'm watching this fight to see where it's, it's going to take him moving forward. You know, God, I would feel so stupid not to pick Hamza. But I love the leech too. Do <laughs> I'm it. Like loving it. Do it. Day. Do you it. know what? I'm going to go with the leech. All right. And for those keeping track, Going all the way back to last year, I still need to pay up my bet to Kelly. But every time okay. I try to, every time I try to pay it up, she's like, "No, that's too much." Um, <laughs> that's great. Uh, I was like, "Where what, are you?" Yeah, no, I love it. People are calling me in the middle of an interview. I apologize about that. No, uh, our, so we have Alexander Volkov against Marcin Tybura in the heavyweight division. And if you don't mind, so this interview doesn't get messed up since I don't have good editing skills can you take this first and then i can respond to this uh this text yeah like make my pick yes yes please of course okay so i'm actually looking at alexander volkov's 
record right now. He obviously beat Alistair Overeem back in February, but then lost to Cyril Gaon in June. I think Cyril Gaon very well might be the best heavyweight out there right now. He's so different. He doesn't move like a heavyweight and he's so well-rounded. So I obviously get why he beat Alexander Volkov, but I do think Alexander Volkov's going to come into this one super motivated, obviously needing a win in the heavyweight division because you have a lot of, speaking of up-and-comers, you have a lot of up-and-comers in the heavyweight division. So I think he's going to want to establish his place for the time being. That's the only reason I would pick Alexander Volkov. I think he's going to be super motivated to keep his spot. Yeah, but how long of a wait is that spot going to be? Because I'll also go on record and say, until John Jones steps up, Curtis Blades might be the fourth best heavyweight in the division. And that's saying a lot. Like, that is saying a hell of a lot. But I know it's going to sound like favoritism. You can go look at, you know, this YouTube channel. You can see Curtis Blades all over the place. I say, Curtis Blades is a friend of the show. Yeah, 100%. But, I mean... I'd watch him fight John Jones. I'd also watch him fight mm-hmm. Stupe Miocic. And, and just one of those fights could change the trajectory of his career. It would change the way fans shit on him. It would change the way everything for Curtis. Mm-hmm. With that being said, I think, you know, they always say, oh, they're fighting for second place. So they're fighting for this. I think you're just now serving ticket number 87. I think that's how I look at this, at this fight. And with that being said, I think I've got to take the younger one. I think I've got to take the, the guy who's kind of on the up climb, and I got to go with Marcin Tybura here. Okay. I like when we pick different. I do, too. I do, too. Um, which will be interesting now because probably the uh, the people's main event, Dan Hooker against M- Islam Makachev. I'm so bad at this. Islam Makachev. What? I, I fucked up. I fucked Islam up. Islam Makachev. There you go. You're John so much- Jones goes Makachev, like John Jones, John Anik. But Islam Makachev has changed the pronunciation Makachev, a few too many right? times for me. Right? We'll go Makachev. Okay, sure. All right, who do you got? Okay. This fight this. actually devastates me because I love Dan Hooker. I absolutely adore him. I was devastated when he lost to Michael Chandler. Devastated. However, I always say Islam Makachev nobody wants to fight him in the lightweight division like nobody he's an absolute monster he's a little freaking to be so uh, I see why he's a mi- almost minus 700 favorite to Dan Hooker's almost plus 500 favorite oh god this fight makes me so upset um I you know what you know what biased pick I'm gonna go Dan Hooker damn it I was gonna say I'm taking Dan Hooker as well okay good no I like that yeah. Yeah, because people tend to forget Dan Hooker almost finished the uncrowned champion. He almost beat Dustin Poirier. Yep, 100%. And, and listen, if I'm dating a – and it's very bad to compare it to dating, but if I'm if I'm dating a three, I'm going to hype her like she's a 15. Right, right, right. So – and I'm not saying Islam's a, a three, but Khabib absolutely needs to be hyping up his guy. That's his yep. guy. Like, 100%. Absolutely. Makes, makes sense. Always ride and die with your ride and dies. Like, of course. With that being said, Dan Hooker's been there, done that. And th- does, does Islam have that knockout power? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Could be putting him in the top 10 pound for pound right now. I, I, don't, I don't buy that at all. Pound for pound? Of course, dude, the hyper guy. But at some point, the hype train has to get rolling. I actually like Dan Hooker more than I would like a Rafael Dos Anjos against Mark. Yeah, I'm actually with you. I think, just think this fight is going to be a huge step up in competition for Makachev. And like you said, Dan Hooker's been there, done that against the elite. I think a lot of people were quick to look down on Dan Hooker because he got starched by Michael Chandler early. But you know what? My whole thing is you get starched by Michael Chandler early or you don't. So I'm not looking into that loss too much. Oh, interesting. I'm going to keep that in mind. Book. Oh, I'm not looking into that too much. I'm going with Dan Hooker, and so are you. Yes, now things okay. get interesting, though. Okay. Because now we have my favorite fight of the weekend, Corey Sandhagen, Pitor Jan. And this is coming from a certified, let it be known, Aljamain Sterling fan. This fight 
this fight for me is what Chad Mendez, Conor McGregor was back in the day. Like we knew Aldo was there and I'm not saying Sterling is Aldo, but once and for all, we got to figure out who the champion is at, at Bantamweight. Fair. I called this fight. You the did. Moment, the, mo- <laughs> the moment Sterling was out, I called it. I just want to put it out there. I texted Kelly immediately. Immediately. I didn't write it. I didn't talk about it. I texted Kelly immediately. I said, you said Rob Fox. I said. Who, who the UFC called first? So don't play me out. The UFC called Rob Fox first and he couldn't do it. Okay, fair. But I called, I called who the opponent would be. And it's no, Corey Sandhagen. Still don't think he lost to TJ. Just throwing that out there. Um, and I'll leave it at that because I don't want to argue with you about somebody, you know, near and dear to you. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but I just got really sour towards Pitor Jan mocking the fake knee during open workouts. I didn't like that. Yeah, I didn't like, like that. Like a neck injury is a serious injury. You can ask any professional athlete that. Of course. I'm just switching locations. So You're, fine. You're fine. You're fine. I deal with fighters doing it all the time. Uh, <laughs> but very close. Uh we had we we have a very important fight for the future of this division and is not it is not to be mocked and messed with and he flinched at Corey Sandhagen during the press conference today like I'm just kind of curious if Pitor Jan is really taking this as seriously as he should um you can think you're champion all day long Conor McGregor thinks he didn't lose a beep Conor McGregor is yelling still I think Diaz thinks he's never lost a fight right right so that's what we call like fighter ignorance and like you have to accept your losses you have to accept it you threw the knee. You threw the knee, bro. You threw yeah. the knee. I don't care. Like, I really don't care. And I'm so on par with, and not just because he was one of the first fighters I ever spoke to, but I'm so on par with what Aljamain Sterling said. It's not my fault he fucked up. Not my fault he didn't know the right. rules. You guys are mad at me. Sorry, you're rooting for the wrong kind of guy. Right. 1,000% all day long. And this isn't to, like, make Aljamain Sterling the victim. It's not. I don't know what's going on with his neck. The only person that knows what's going on with his neck is the doctors and Aljamain Sterling. Right. And you can take all the practice photos that you want. To me, seeing him trying to train through it and bringing in a guy like Adrian Yanez, who I love. I do too. That tells me Aljamain Sterling is taking Peter Yan way more seriously than Yan is taking the top of this division. And with all of that being said, Kelly, I am taking Corey Sandhagen to beat Peter Yeah. Yan. I think Jan is all along since the illegal knee. It's been, you know, I, I, it's my belt. I want my belt back. Da, 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 and not really taking ownership for the fact that he's the reason that the belt is no longer in his possession. He was absolutely owning Aljo up until that point. Should the fight have gone the way it was going, he would still have the belt, but he illegally need Aljo. And that's the reason that the belt is no longer with him. We talked about it today on Jimmy's show as well. of Like Jimmy saying, you know, is, Piotr Jan stuck in this Aljamain Sterling fight and like kind of looking past Corey Sanhagen, which I wasn't even really thinking about, which is definitely a valid question to ask. It, it's tough. I, I, I do think that these two guys are the best two bantamweights in the division right now uh, for different reasons. But I just think that Corey Sanhagen is so awkward and dangerous in there because of how awkward he is. And he's so long. And I would imagine there's going to be a... I, I wonder what the reach advantage is going to be because um, I'm not really sure what either guy's reach is. Um, but I, it's so hard because I do like Piotr Jan a lot. I'm going to go with Corey Sanhagen too. I think he's going to have a chip on his shoulder because he thinks he beat TJ in that close fight. Um, in that close fight. It's three-inch reach advantage. For Sanhagen. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to go with Sanhagen too. I just, I'll put it to you like this. True or false? Corey Sanhagen knocked out Frankie Edgar with a walk-off flying knee. True. Knocked out Marlon Marais with a spinning head kick. True. Okay. Peter Young, he's just he, dangerous. He, he's not to be taken for granted. He's no. not. He's not. No. And, and does Aljo rely primarily on his wrestling and jiu-jitsu? I think he does. 
Do I think Corey Sanhagen can wrestle? I do. <laughs> the biggest factor, as in every fight, in my opinion, personally, it always starts on the feet. So if you, if you come in there, I'm getting Luke Rockhold, Michael Bisping vibes to this fight. Sure. So go ahead, Peter Yon. Come in. Think, think it's a joke. Think your belt's sitting in Long Island. And then don't have a belt. And then what? Like, I don't know. I don't know, Kelly. I, I, I think this could be a rude, rude awakening for Pitorian. And there's a lot of guys at the top of that division that are, that are ready for him. Um, Rob Font. I was going to say, all I know is if someone doesn't get Rob Font in there for a freaking belt sometime soon, I'm going to go ballistic. Yeah. <laughs> like, this yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. All right, let's move to the main event, and then we'll spend a little bit of time on uh, just for the record. And I'm not saying this indirectly to be like, "Let's hurry up." I'm gonna, I'm gonna go past our time just so that e even if I miss a little bit of this Knicks Bulls game, well worth it talking to you. Right, we'll do some. Jan Blahovich, Jan Blahovich, uh, Glover Teixeira. I, I, it's so, it's such a weird fight. Like so that's. Weird. That's the craziest thing. It's such a weird fight. Like, they're both really good. Jan Blahovich has got the power. I like Glover a lot more on the ground. Yeah. Um, but if he's on the ground, that might be because of Blahovich punch. Sure. I, I, I mean, I really don't know. Like, I don't – I'll let you start. <sighs> well, like you just said, I like Glover on the ground, but I do think that – Glover is still very powerful despite his age. And I think that that gets lost. I mean, look what he did to Anthony Smith. And you, I, for a fact, you won't find a bigger Anthony Smith fan than myself. Look what he did to Tiago Santos. Like he, it's literally the Benjamin Button or whatever, like who's aging backwards. Like Glover to share has found a really good form for himself. And I'm going to pick him. Whether he defends the belt once or never, I'm going to pick Glover Teixeira. It's crazy because as I look at Blahovich's five-fight win streak, Dominic Reyes falling off. He went to a decision against Adesanya. Corey Anderson is not the same Corey Anderson anymore. I think that's been proven in fact. Jocker Ray and then Luke Rockhold who came up, you know. So it's not the most impressive. I mean, he did – clean out Luke Rockhold, which I didn't mind, but, um, anyways, well, I would say, I would say Corey Anderson and Glover Teixeira outside of Israel Adesanya at true 205ers will probably be the biggest test for Blahovich. And if he gets past it, there's no doubting the man's resume, but right. I'm going Glover Teixeira as well. Yeah. <laughs> there's something about giving a guy his, his, his opportunity that's been there for so long and he deserves it and he, he needs it. And he knows that this is it. Right. It's yeah. the last chance he's getting. So he's going to leave it all out there, which is why I don't, I can't pick against him. I Would it be know. wrong to say it's like Stipe vibes? Remember how long Stipe really truly deserved the shot? And yeah. He's yelling, and he's yelling at Dana after knocking out Arlovsky. And then Joe, Joe Rogan had to make the title fight. Like Rogan had to be like, it's undeniable you're getting a title shot. Right, like, right, like, right. Like you, it's undeniable Glover needed this fight. And deserve this fight. So right, he's and, done everything that he could have possibly done to get there. And can I? And I'm going to say this respectfully, and not that he'll ever hear this, but if you ever tell him, I hope you 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 say it with respect. We all saw Anthony Smith going in there early and, and handling business, and Glover Teixeira just hit a switch at some point in the middle of that fight, and beat Anthony Smith up. And, like, you just have to kind of call it how it is. Yeah. Anthony was going through a lot outside of the cage leading up to that fight. And I do think – I can't speak for Anthony. I do think that plays a factor into it, even if he says he doesn't. Right. You have to assume it does. Right. Right. And I, you can make the ass out of me. I'll assume it. But the way Glover turned it on late in that fight, it just tells me there's, there's a little bit of him that knows it's right there and knows there's only one shot to get it. Exactly. And, and I think he's going to do everything to get this fight to the ground, and I think he's going to do everything to capture the title. Does he keep yeah. the title? I don't know. I don't exactly. Know. I just don't think there's any bigger motivation than knowing that this is the last time 
you're going to be in this position. You know what I mean? So you got to make the most of it because you're not coming back. <laughs> you're not, you're not coming back. All right, Kelly, we are on to our final, final segment of the night. Um, by the way, thank you so much for doing this. Um, of course. We have such a great card for UFC 268. No disrespect to the other prelims. I'm going to point out two of them, and then we'll just talk about the main card. Sure. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add these two prelims to our, uh, to our picks. I'm going to start with Ally Quinta against Bobby Green. And, uh, you know, very excited to see Al back in there. Bobby yeah. Green had a great run during the pandemic. I, I, I was down for everything that Bobby Green stood for during the pandemic, talking about his family, his life, his everything, uh, coaches, everything, be nicer to people, be kinder to other people. Love that. But I still think part of me, like people forget, we're not that far removed from Ally Quinta beating a top level Kevin Lee in a rematch. Yeah that many people thought Kevin Lee was going to run through him mm -hmm. like New York strong. Right. Like I, that's, that's strong Island. Like, is that what they say out there? Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go ally Quinta in this fight. I just think that, you know, he, a pissed off ally Quinta is the best ally Quinta. Yeah. I mean, just even, I know we haven't seen Alan quite some time and I think he's coming off back to back losses. Yes. I'm looking at it now, Dan Hooker and, Cowboy Cerrone back in 2019. I do think the strength of schedule is better. And I do think he's going to be super motivated to ultimately be back in there. And if you thought I was going to pick against Ally Quinta, you are wrong because he was born like 30 minutes from me. So I will pick the Long Island boys all day. Now, I don't, Joe. I don't want to throw like too much of your personal info out there, but sure. you work, you work in real estate, right? You do some do. real estate for is there like a Murphy I Quinta like rivalry on the real estate scene? No, he's like Nassau County, where we're primarily out in Suffolk. But okay. if they wanted to do some kind of merger, <laughs> I would have been. <laughs> oh shit, that would be great. Doing forces, right? <laughs> that should be your podcast: selling houses and fighting. Right. Selling and fighting. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, except I'm not fighting. But if Al was on it, that would work. There you go. I mean, you can't have Frankie Edgar doing that podcast with Roger from Jersey Shore, and then it's called The Fighter and the Tramp. Like, you got to... Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you probably think Roger from Jersey Shore is a tramp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing podcast ideas out here at you. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing a lot right now. I just want you to keep doing what you're doing because you're so good at what you do. And, like, oh, you. you don't get enough credit. Thank you. Uh, you, need to be, you do a lot behind the camera. You need to be in front of the camera. You need to be in front of the camera. <laughs> Mark my words, listeners, whoever's listening. Kelly is following in the footsteps of Laura Sanko, Magno Levy, you name them. They're like two of my favorites. So yeah. that is very nice. Edmund Shabazian taking on Nazarene Amavov. I, I'm Imavov. Uh, let me see. This Not fight announcement mean... was brought to you by Miller Lite. Imavov? Imavov. There you go. That's right. what I said. Um, yeah. This is a big one for Edmund Shabazian. Coming off two straight losses, he was really fast-tracked to the top. Mm -hmm. so Ronda Rousey, protege. The golden boy needs one. He needs and I'm going to go as far to say as he gets one, and he gets one in stylish fashion. I don't know how, but I'm predicting a knockout. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It was a lot very quick for him. Um, and I do still think he's very talented. It was just too much too soon. So I'm going to go with Shablazian as well. And he also is a bit of a birthday buddy. We were born the same year, five days apart. <laughs> so Gross. I'm going with my birthday bud. Gross. Um, do you have the card pull up in front of you? Because I don't want to like, I want you to take the lead on the next fight because I don't want to, you know. You know the on next the, fight. On, on the, the main, main card? Oh, the first fight on the main card, sure. Is that what we're doing? Oh, that's what we're doing. Do you, Are we looking at it the same way? Is there something wrong? Wait, because I know you love Billy Q, but he's not showing up as the first fight for me. I, he's on the first fight for me. He is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate so I'm looking at the UFC's like website. That. What I, are you oh, looking at? I look at Tapology. FYI. Right, hold Tapology. on. Let me pull it up there then. Hold on. Hold Tapology on. is so much better. Tapology, if you're, let me just say this. If you need any information on a fighter or on an event, Tapology is the place to be. 
Shameless plug. Okay, I'll take the lead here. Billy Quarantillo, Billy Q is taking on Shane Burgos to kick off the main card. Mike can't handle it because he just loves Billy Q a lot. Are you okay? Like that's not going to help the interview request I just put in, but sure. Yeah, it's great. Um, <laughs> listen, I will never forget. Oh God. What, I think it was a Spike Carlisle fight. I think mm-hmm. that was the fight. I was still living in New Jersey. You and I were still working together. And I was like, Kelly, Billy Q is fighting. And I think he's going to be really, really good. I remember and then, this. And then Spike Harlow, like, walked back to the corner, and fucking Billy just came through. Like, so weird at all times, but, oh, my God, could you have given him a better opponent for this fight? This is the people's main event. This, this is, is the dark horse. This is the dark horse fight of the night. This is potential fight of the year candidate. Like, this fight is so effing good, Kelly. I literally can't, but I'm taking Billy Corinzillo, and that's all I got. That's all I got. That's all I need to say. I'm going to say this. I've never spoken to him. I hope I speak to him. <laughs> Billy Q can be my, Bre- so if I'm Rogan, he can be my Brendan Shaw. Okay. I will defend so, that. No, man Billy Q's great. great. We've had him on Jimmy's show and he is actually very lovely to talk did you, to. Did you tell him I said I? No, you, you never do. You never do. You never do. You never do. Kelly and Mike is now Kelly hates Mike. That's what that is. <laughs> oh, Kelly and Mike says hi because he's not here. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Great. Awesome. I, it wouldn't be right for me to not pick Billy Q after you just confessed your undenying love for him. So I would also go to Billy Q. But here's the thing, like Shane Burgos is such a dangerous opponent. He's so. so well, because that's the thing. I was going to pick Shane Burgos, but now I feel bad. No, no, no. Please pick, pick with your heart. No, I'm going to pick Billy Q. That is my oh, See, that was a okay. trick question. I said, pick with your heart and we call each other best friends and you you're good. I passed. You're, you you did pass. It wasn't a test, but you definitely freaking passed. I mean, Shane Burgos, we're talking about a guy coming off an incredible – I mean, he needs a win, right? And I love Billy Q. I love me some Billy Q. It's not the guy I want Billy Q facing right now because Shane Burgos needs a win after losing to Josh Emmett and an incredible fight against Edson Barbosa. Fireworks fireworks like literal fireworks this sets the table for the rest of the night and it's the perfect fight to put the rest on the, of the fights are so good too it's like actually stressing me out yeah frankie edgar marlon vera hello what like hello yeah yeah no i'm here um i don't even know what to say i like Listen, you'll never, I'll, I'll just admit this. You'll never hear me go against Mark Henry, ever. You'll yeah. n- never hear me go against Mark Henry. Quick story, he doesn't know this. I want to say it was an Eddie Alvarez fight. I was at a bar a couple years ago watching an Eddie Alvarez fight. It might have been Gaethje, I'm not sure. But uh, it was, it was. It was the Detroit pay-per-view. You know where I'm going with this. And I'm, Kelly as embarrassed as I can make myself right now. I'm not standing on the bar top, but I'm standing on my chair, one foot leaned over like this. And I'm screaming, 62, 62. And the owner's like, what the fuck? And I'm like, turn up the volume. So he turns up the volume and you hear Mark Henry, 62. And Eddie throws the flush knee that knocks out Gaethje. And everyone was like, who the hell are you? Who is this man? Like, when I watch a Mark Henry fighter fight, I am so focused and locked in. And Marlon Vera is a hell of a competitor. But I can't, one, I can't go against Mark Henry. Two, Frank Yeager had zero reason to give me the time of day when he was in town a couple of years ago. He did. By the way, you get to talk to, like, your favorite people in the sport. Don't, like... The only regret I have was the only question I asked him was, how are the kids? A lot of regrets about talking to people in the sport. None worse than when RJ Clifford FaceTimed me and I picked up the phone and it was Justin Gaethje. And I was sick as a dog, pale, hair not done. And I said, oh my fucking God, 
And I said, I'm so sorry. And he was like, no, like, you're good. And I was like, I'm so sick. Like, I'm so embarrassed. And he was like, no, it's all right. Like, feel better. I was like, feel better. I've never felt worse in my life. And I don't think I'll ever come back from this. So I, uh, I get it. Yeah. No, like, I don't know. Mark Henry gave me an opportunity of a lifetime when he was in here for uh, uh, Marlon Marais and Henry Cejudo when they fought in Chicago. We saw Frankie. Got threatened to get beat up by Caitlin Chukay again because I was sending Coach Henry a lot of pizza. And then, like, two days before the fight, I saw Frankie and he's like, What's up? And I'm like, How are the kids? Like, How are the kids? I, I was like, I, I don't fucking know. Like, I don't know. Like, and he like lit up though. Like, he's such a good father. So I was like, Maybe he'll respect me a little right, bit. Right. About the kids. I was like, I don't want to like jump down his throat about fights. I was like, Fuck. Like, and I had a friend with me and he goes, how are the kids? Yeah, how right. Are, like, that's the best you could do. That's that's what you came up with. How are the kids? And I was like, how are the kids? Anyways, this is a hell of a fight. I don't know that it has true implications in the division. I, I think it's more about. Not at this who's, point. Who's staying around, right? Yep. Not to say either of them will get cut. But I want to see Frankie go one more run, right? We're talking about a Glover Teixeira guy. like, and, and I don't know. I don't know what Frankie has left in him. Excuse me. Wow. Um, but I would definitely love – that's embarrassing. I would definitely love to see Frankie Edgar go on one more run. I'm not saying he needs to get to a title fight or anything like that, but I would love to see Frankie Edgar go on a, a, another win streak and not necessarily go out on top, but go out on his terms. So I'm going to take Frankie Edgar in this fight. And I don't think he's going to pick against – Yeah, I don't pick against Frankie Edgar ever. So I'm also going with him. This is bad. All right. You are not going to like, oh, wait, no, sorry. I almost jumped the gun. So I'm, I'm so set on my winner for this one that I totally just skipped past it. We are probably about to have the only fight we'll ever have, hopefully, ever. Um, it's going to be a big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Michael Chandler, Justin Gaethje. Kelly. What about it? Kelly. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Like, what is there to say? Um, I'm going to hit you with a little technical thing that I, because I was on a friend's podcast earlier. And, and here's what I'm going to say. And my friend, Mike Finch, is a very technical guy because he was also a fighter at one point. He said he believes Chandler has a better offensive wrestling game. And so for me, that locked in on one thing. When do guys who like to wrestle go for the takedown? When they're getting leg kicked. So now we have offensive wrestling against very destructive leg kicks, but they can both strike like hell. And you put all that and you wrap it up and you present it to Kelly Murphy, you've got fireworks. And so we would expect them to wrestle. It's what they're great at. They're going to stand and bang. They're both performers. I, I want to know if the first leg kick Michael Chandler takes does he shoot? Because we're talking about a guy who's also had that issue in New York when he fought Brent Primus and he, he had that, like, I guess not drop, drop foot, but he had the, the nerve went dead and he's kind of just sitting there for a minute. And then everything came back to life. Like five minutes after the fight was over, that sucked. I do you think there's a little New York revenge in mind for Michael Chandler? No. And as much as you don't want to like give any credit to anyone who fights Justin Gaethje, I think people are really overlooking the flat the fact that one mistake by Michael Chandler cost him the world title right now. One mistake against Charles Oliveira cost him that fight. And if you go back to it, I guarantee you 101 times out of 100, he swarms Oliveira, he finishes Oliveira in the first, and we have a different champion. And so I'm taking Michael Chandler. I'm not. Um, I appreciate that, though. Um, I think Michael Chandler's great. Do I, I? I. That's not where I'm coming from at all. I just think Justin Gaethje is more well-rounded, and I think Justin Gaethje's cardio is a lot better the longer this fight goes. Advantage Justin Gaethje. Michael Chandler is the best in the first round, and then he ultimately gasses. I think Gaethje's game plan will be to chop him up from the legs up. And I do think Gaethje hits harder. I just do. Do I That's have right. any evidence to back me up? No, but I think a lot of the lightweights that have fought Justin Gaethje will say that he's the hardest hitting guy they fought. 
I don't think Michael Chandler is going to love his light kicks because he's a devastating light kicker. But Michael Chandler was the one that started with, oh, first one that shoots for a takedown, the bitch. And Justin Gaethje was like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Like, you know what I mean? Or what? Didn't I don't Connor remember exactly what he said. What? Didn't Connor start that? No, I think Michael Chandler did. Well, no. with Justin Gaethje in this fight. I don't yeah, mean in yeah, general. Yeah, but I'm saying, I, I'm, I think Chandler stole from Connor because Connor did yeah. say, first one to shoot the sure. bitch. Right. And it was just, it was just a stupid thing to say. We, I remember we discussed it on the show, but I, 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 I will never pick against Justin Gaethje. So for all the reasons I just said, I am going to go with Gaethje. So I'm going to preface this as we move into our two title fights for 268 and say, neither of them should be happy. Um, yeah, I, I definitely agree with one. I would love to hear your argument on the second. Okay. When you knock Zhang Wiley out in the first round with a head kick, for the record, again, bawling my eyes out. I love at, Rose. At the reaction from Rose. I'm the best. I'm the yep. best. I'm the best. And then Pat Barry, you're the best motherfucker ever. Like, yep. and we all need a Pat Barry in our lives. Yeah, like, we really do. For you, Kelly, in a, not in a, like, weird way. Like, not in a Pat Barry <laughs> way, but in a hype way. Right. Um, yeah, I don't think that this fight needed to happen. I really don't. Uh, and with that being said, look, listen, Zhang Wiley. You gave, slot in, Carla. Yeah, one hundred percent. Me too. Like, and I'm gonna keep that in mind for the for the main event. Sure. The, the the one who's most deserving is who should be there, in my opinion. Yeah. I think the UFC right now is catering to a market. I think the UFC right now is trying to see if a woman who put on one of the greatest women's fights of all time in Zhang Wiley against Joanna Yan Jacek still has that in her. But like, again, I think they're giving way too much attention to the challenger and the focus should be on the champion. And I think Rose may run through her once again. No, a hundred percent. I mean, I'm not, it's rare that I'm a fan of the immediate rematch, especially given how this fight went. Like you said, it was undeniable. There was nothing controversial about it. Didn't go to decision. Rose won fair and square. Rose won dominantly. I don't think Wei Zhang should be back in there right away. I a thousand percent would have slotted Carla as far as in that exact spot. So I'm not particularly happy this is happening. Am I excited? Sure. I'm, I love watching Rose fight. Um, and like you said, Wei Zhang put on one of the most exciting fights that I've ever seen against Joanna Yajic. But yeah, I mean, other than that, this fight just is what it is to me. Is it going to be good? I'm sure it is. Am I particularly happy about it? No. And I would go with Rose again. I, I don't think there was any doubt about it. Kelly, before we move on to the main event, this is so bad, but I feel like we are going to spend a few minutes talking about it as we wrap up. May I pause this recording to run to the restroom? Of course. Miller, Miller Light sucks. I'm going to pause yes. this. All right. Thank you I'm so killing. much. Okay. Thank you for the little uh, Mother Nature break. I appreciate that. Um, all right, so I know you were going to ask me or you were going to call me out and saying that, you know, I don't really like this. Uh, I don't like this, this rematch here. Um, talking about the UFC 268 main event. It's myself, Mike Pendleton, Kelly Murphy, UFC 268, Kamaru Usman, Colby Covington 2. Kelly, what did I just say? about the co-main event, I said it should go to the one most deserving. Yes. It's not Col it's not Colby Covington. I'm sorry. It's not. It's it's not even if you were so willing to to let Tyron Willie walk away. And I understand he's been on a long skid. Sure. That can't be the guy that you just the way that people say Connor doesn't deserve a title shot for beating Donald Cerrone. Why are we giving Kobe Covington a, a fight for beating Tyron Woodley? Who do you slot in, Leon Edwards? A uh, one thousand okay. percent. No, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So, and, and I'll argue. We can get into this. You can ask me any question you want. I'll argue this: if if Leon beats Jorge Masvidal and does not get a title fight, I'm done. I'm one hundred percent. That would be done. ridiculous. I'm one hundred percent done because. And I had the argument presented to me today on another show. Well, you know, he's, you know, he's got the no contest, the eye poke. He almost got knocked out by Nate Diaz, da 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 
if you beat the two most popular fighters, not not best, most popular fighters in that division, the way the UFC is constructed these days, you deserve that title shot. You deserve Absolutely. it anyways. Not only beating the two most popular, but now his win streak would extend to 10. Let me, before we get into this fight, let me ask you. If Leon Edwards knocks out Nate Diaz, I mean, puts him to sleep, does Leon Edwards fight Kamar Usman instead of Colby Covington at 268? You know, I think his chances would be better, but I have a feeling that... That's too embarrassing. I don't even know what just happened. That was so bad. Was Are so you bad. kidding? It's my first one ever. And you're literally supposed to be going out in this outfit that you're, you're, you're spilling everywhere. No, I wasn't. It's I was so mesmerized by your take. Oh, that, okay. That I didn't even give yet. <laughs> I was just setting it up. Well, you said, what yeah, I was going to say before you did that was that I think it definitely would have helped his chances because obviously he won, but Nate Diaz had that flurry at the end that left that door open like the Diaz brothers do very well. They leave that door cracked for the what if, what if it was not around? And what if it was this? What if it was that? Whatever. I do think that the UFC was dead set on this rematch happening now. So I don't know, you know, if, if that would have changed anything ultimately. Should it? Yeah, Why? of course. Why were they dead set on this? I don't know. Dana, you know, Dana's, oh, this, what, it was one of the best fights I've ever seen. And the, obviously the animosity between the two of them and obviously the name value between the two of them. Like, I think there's a lot of factors. Does Colby start name value? Who? Colby? Yeah, whether it's good or bad, people talk about him. You know what makes it even Someone worse? Someone talks about Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards beat Nate Diaz and everyone talked about Nate Diaz. Yeah, so that's that's my problem right there. Right. Like, dude's on a nine-fight win streak. He, his last loss was to Kamara Usman five years ago. Like, I don't get it. I literally don't get it. As, I'm as with great, you. As, as great as this fight may be, and – fucking hanging in the hall of fame right now and it hasn't even happened yet the fact that leon edwards i'm li it's literally i'm watching my ex-girlfriend date someone five times below me and i gotta be okay with it I, I gotta be okay with it i have to watch something that i know is so there's something so much more worth it out there literally the ufc thrives on those storylines Leon Edwards, last loss to Kamaru Usman. Kamaru Usman, dominant champion, has run through everybody. But Leon Edwards is a different fighter. And, and I, I will poo-poo this shit that people say Leon Edwards doesn't talk enough. When he was supposed to fight Tyron Woodley before COVID hit, he, he was on this show. And I asked him, you know, what do you think about Tyron being a rapper and all that? Without, that's basically what I asked him. And he said, I should come out to his song, yeah? That'd be funny, wouldn't it? And I'm like, oh my God, he gets it. He fucking, Leon Edwards gets it. He's, he, you morons don't understand because he's locked away in England. Right. And I think if it wasn't for COVID and if it, there's something about fighters from overseas that have already had the opportunity to establish themselves. I don't think Leon's had that same opportunity. For sure. He's, he's one of very few and I'm sure you can find a couple of them. He's one of very few whose peak reached right when the pandemic hit. Yeah, I mean, and then you put him up against one of the biggest names in the sport, and everyone's talking about Nate, and he lost. Or, Nate, and he, Nate looked really good for, like, two minutes or right, whatever it was. Right, and like a 90 Everybody second talked about Nate. That was it. And, and, the, and the shittiest part about this all, and you know I love me some Jorge Masvidal, but – not a single person will give Leon Edwards a chance going into that fight. Not a single person. You don't, you don't think he'll be the favorite? Do you have the? Do you still have odds in front of you? Can you bring up the two sixty nine odds? This is like this is like producer work. This is like this is like Rogan telling Jamie, pull this shit up, and then boom. Oh, um, there it see. is. Okay, well, they're not up on the UFC site, which is where I was looking for them. The UFC 269 odds. Yeah, because, and we'll get into this fight, because there's there's a little bit Okay, more so FanDuel has Leon Edwards as a minus, uh, uh, minus 198. 
to Jorge Masvidal's plus 166. So that's roughly the same across the board. So that's almost, almost a pick them. Not, not officially, but. Right. Close yeah. enough. Yeah. So um, I think it's the aftermath of the first fight that also bothers me. Like Colby, Colby being Colby. And I'm going to, I have a hidden gem. I'm, I'm keeping it in the Easter basket. I'm going to throw it at you here in a second. Okay. Um, the, the aftermath, and like, you know, listen, Colby can sell and I get that. And he can market and I get that. But like saying, I didn't break my jaw. Like I didn't get knocked out. That's not, bro. We saw it. We saw it. Your jaw was a mess. You got knocked right. out. You weren't defending. You can't, you can't tell me the sun isn't bright. Like, right. It's, like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it is what it is. So that bothered me. But here's my Easter egg. Here's my little, my secret okay. argument weapon. Uh, my little Pokemon ball. This is the first fight, I believe, Colby without American Top Team. The, if it's not the first, it's definitely the biggest. I don't know if he was with American Top Team still during the Tyron Woodley fight. But now he doesn't have all the shit drama to build his fights off of calling out this person calling out that person again Colby can sell the shit out of anything but now he needs to stylistically sell himself to the crowd to the UFC to the division to Kamar Usman and uh I'm gonna agree with his manager and I think Kamar Usman is the baddest man on the planet and that's saying something for a guy. That, who Ali. Yeah. And, and I'm I'm saying that as somebody who can't wait for Leon Edwards to fight Kamar Usman. So I'm guessing you're picking Kamar Usman. Oh, I'm just going to let you go off of all that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not as mad at this fight as I am about the women's strawweight fight. <laughs> But I didn't even make a good argument. No, you did. Because I get it. I, I, a thousand percent. I knew you were talking about Leon Edwards. I think he fought it in there. I think Leon Edwards is very deserving. I think it was ridiculous that, I mean, and you know, I was one of many. We were talking about Nate the next day and not Leon Edwards. He doesn't really get the credit he deserves. He hasn't gotten the credit he's deserved for a long time now. And I'm very excited to see him fight Kamara Usman because I think he's a much improved fighter since then as well. My co-producer, Mike Russo, and I, who you work with as well at SiriusXM, have always said, like, we're not picking against Kamara Usman anymore. Like, Russo was like, you know what? I thought Gilbert Burns was the guy to get it done. Wrong. Like, I'm not picking against Kamara Usman ever again. And honestly, I kind of feel the same way. Like, I feel like anytime I ultimately give, and I think Kamara Usman has fought really talented guys. So that's not what I'm saying. Anytime I give Kamara Usman's opponent enough credit to go as far as to say that, oh, I think they're going to win. Kamara Usman always makes me look stupid. So I'm not picking against him anymore. I think he's continued to improve since the Colby fight. Whereas I don't really know about Colby. You know what I mean? So I'm going to pick Kamara here for sure. I'll I'm going to go Trevor I'm, Whitman clean sweet. Clean sweet. I'm, a, I'm prepared always for rebuttals. And a lot of people have said, well, so you were okay with the Jorge Masvidal rematch, but not the Colby rematch. George took that first fight on six days notice and went five rounds. No, look, I, I think you're 100% right. It, it was a different situation. I went into the rematch not really thinking it was going to go much different. You know what I mean? Right. But at least there was that to fall back on, that it was a short notice fight. Obviously, uh, George, isn't it Jorge? I do both. Oh, God. And I was about to do George, and I've never called him that before. Obviously, Jorge took it on short notice, but ultimately it was a short notice fight for Kamaro as well. You know what I mean? Because he wasn't preparing for Masvidal. For, so, for sure. But that I think was what no- I fell back on. I didn't think it was going to go different, but at least there was that. You know what I mean? This doesn't have that. Yeah. Uh, disclaimer. I'm going to take a plead the fifth when we do our UFC 269 preview for Leon and, and Masvidal because I – Listen, the, the, fir- <laughs> the first fight between Kamaru and, and Masvidal, I was arguing with people that Masvidal won that fight. Wait. Kamaru Masvidal? Yeah, for the first fight. When when you all on drugs watching it? I just the same way I thought Volkanovski lost to Holloway on, on Fight Island. Uh, I don't know what's going on in Abu Dhabi, but apparently they like when people's legs are attacked. 
but you can't win a fight off foot stops for Kamara. Kamara was a big foot stomper. Big foot stomper. Big. Then, did not like it. True story. I lost the friendship that night because I was very upset over the over the Has result. Has it rekindled or it's gone? No, oh, gone. One hundred percent gone. Yeah, like I was called and like, uh, hey, I just need somebody to talk to, and I was like, that fight was terrible. Shut up. Don't care. Leave me alone. I yeah, it was bad. Oh, um, man. Yeah, it was not good. Not good. So yeah, it is what it is. Everything happens for a reason. But uh, again, he they fought. Usman ran through Masvidal in the second fight. All due respect to both sides. It happened. Same thing I said about Rose and Wiley, Zhang Wiley. By the way, for the radio side, what do you say first? I usually say Wiley Zhang. Okay. Okay. What does Jimmy Smith say? I believe Jimmy says Zhang Wiley. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I'm 99% sure I will know for certain next week. Yeah, I, I forget how I write it, but sometimes I want to – I think I do Wei Li Zhang just for writing, and it's ridiculous. But, right. uh, yeah, no, I mean, listen, I, I can't argue Masvidal when the second fight happened. It, it happened, you know what I mean? Um, right. But, again, I just – there's so much more to, to offer a title fight. And it's not a guy who's going to come out here and make crazy allegations and and – potential racist comments and it's we, the fight business take a shot every time dana says it sure the, the number one person sitting back right now kelly Cohn is freaking money is colby covington after he was like oh dana said we could call people terrorists oh man oh boy look what i got for tomorrow and like i was in the building for their press conference and like did not like who's been taking his shirt off i was just maybe just a little jealous but like <laughs> I was like, really? We got, we got, not only do we got Nick and Nate Diaz in the room. We got, uh, I love them. Their like aura is ridiculous. Right. Like, I don't, did, am I doing a good Diaz right now? Like, uh. Yeah. And honestly, when they say they've never lost a fight, I believe it. Like, I, I love lost. those guys. All right, look, if Kelly I ain't never lost a fight, Nick Diaz Please army. Stop it. That is good. <laughs> Ew, true story. I'm so freaked out. True story. When I get drunk, I I go Nate Diaz on people. I'm like, I don't. Might go on another drink. I'm like, uh, um, oh my god. Who doesn't want to drink? No, Nick Diaz Army. And they're like, what? I'm shocking. <laughs> Come I for can't. the fights. Come for the fight breakdown. Stay for the Nate Diaz. <laughs> Stay for the Nate Diaz impression and leave. Um, don't actually <laughs> don't saying. leave, don't leave. Hit subscribe, don't by the way. Us. Uh, there is a video, and I'll send it to you or I'll send you the clip. But there's a video when Nate called out Connor and <laughs> he was talking to Ariel, and Nate was like, We all fight, fight, fight for real, fight. None of this funny fake. Now we're gonna fight, fight. And then he was like, He's a ninja. I'm a ninja. What, motherfucker? <laughs> like, I literally like, believe it. Like, and I used to have it down to a T. I'm kind of paraphrasing there, but like, those are like, <laughs> like, I'd be out at bars after my show, like, right before, like, right around the time of their fight. And my boy would be like, do it. And I'd be like, we're going to fight, fight, real fight. I'm like <laughs> so freaked out right now. Like, stop. Just, Listen, if Jimmy Smith ever needs somebody to call in and do like a Nate Diaz impression, uh, yo, Jimmy. I just can't believe what I just heard. I really yeah, can't. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it is what it is. But uh, I, I, I'm i picking Kamar Usman to win this fight. Of course. Uh, I, I also just don't know how much more Kamar Usman wants to stay around. Like, he's kind of like been there, done that with everybody right now. So for me, it's it's hard to say. I hope he stays around. I would like the Leon fight. I would I would love the Leon fight. Um, it's just a division gets better not by who your top contender is. It gets better by who your third and fourth contenders are. Of so so right now it's Kamaru, Masvidal, Colby, Leon. 
Who's right. Not? And it's like if he beats Colby, he's literally lapping people. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and then if he beats Leon him. again, lapping the, like the rest of the contenders. It's it gets to a point where it's like you said, I've been there, done that. Like, what am I doing anymore? So we have Usman together, Rose together. If you want to change one pick, you'd also have the Trevor Whitman clean sweep. Just saying. Which, which one would that be? I literally just think you should pick Justin Gaethje. I I, I can't even fathom. Yes, you're testing pick. friendships right here. We are, because I just Can can't I go on it. record and just say I think Michael Chandler is one of the most handsome men in MMA? I think Justin Gaethje is. So. Okay. So okay. we got to we got to stick by the handsomeness. Like I got. You like Drew Dober the best though. Drew Dober's got a great head of hair. Yeah, he does. It's not and great. No, and nobody. Nobody slicks their hair back during a fight better than Drew Dober. Nobody. No. no. Nobody. James Fantastic, Crawford. Fantastic um, jawline as well from Drew Dober. Sure. Fantastic. I don't, I don't look at that. I just saw the hair. <laughs> I'm just saying one of the best I've ever seen in and out of a uh, fight game. So we we are split on Chandler Gaethje. We both have Frankie. We both have Billy. We both have Edmund. And you took Ally Quinta because, of course, you did. So a lot of our picks – for 268, different. we're fairly the same. I think 267, we're pretty split. Yes, this is my public plea to anyone who watches this. One, please subscribe, and two, follow Kelly's work. Three, find a way to send Kelly money so she doesn't have to take out of her own pocket and get her to 268. I know. I tweeted. I was like, does anyone want to help me out? Like, Did your inbox not blow up? Takers, not Yeah. Not a lot, but know. enough. I'm just an island girl. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Here's the question, though. Did you do it on the gram or did you do it on Twitter? It was like, it was on Twitter, but it was vague. Like, I wasn't like, listen, here's my Venmo, send me money. It was more of like, can anyone find me a cheaper ticket? I think I have to be more direct in my approach. All right. You should be more direct and you should put it on the gram. That's my challenge to you. You're right. No, you're 100% right. Just like okay. I was every 17 minutes, right? You go after the friend to get the main target. Now yeah. you should go on the gram. Like, yeah. Twitter okay, was the okay. friend. Twitter was the friend. Now you need to go for the main target. This you got it. I'm going. Like, I don't care. I have to be in there. It doesn't happen with that. Like, UFC comes to New York and your favorite fighter's on the card. Yes. Like, it's happening. Oh, oh, it does. All right. We're going to, I'm going to trust in you to turn this around before we close it out. But quick story. Welcome to story time. UFC 205 announced first first time ever, right? Like UFC's coming into Madison Square Garden. My aunt lives in New Jersey. I'm dating a girl. I think I'm going to marry this girl. Uh, my boss and I are both. Did I ever tell you this? I feel like I told you this. Uh, I feel like you might have. My, my boss and I are the biggest UFC fans in the world. We talk about it. We discuss it. So I'm going to take care of it. You just get yourself to New York. Perfect. Great. No problem. Babe, in two months from now, I'm going to go to New York, da 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 et cetera, et cetera. Cubs go to the World Series. I work in sports retail. Well, there's no way I'm going to be able to get off. I already requested it, so I'm getting it off. So is my boss. Two things we should have absolutely gotten fired for, because the Cubs won the World Series. Five days after they win, we're in New York. The night before, I'm scheduled to go to New York. I'm supposed to leave 5 a.m. on a uh, – Standby flight. See my aunt. Standby. Standby. Because oh. I got connections. I got connections. So I'm not going to pay. Just show up. Standby. Okay. Okay. I, you want. I was going to go see my boss. Hang with him all weekend. Visit my family at the end. It is what it is. So I'm doing my radio show. In, the, in a bar. And the now ex walks into the bar. A smile as big as the sun. I'm like, um, what's going on? She's like, guess what? And I'm like, what's up? And she's like, I'm going to New York with you. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. for two months, we've, we've had it set that I'm going with my boss. I'm going with my boss. So she said, no, she basically, long story short, she threw a bitch fit at her job. She was a nanny. The people she worked for bought us two plane tickets almost 10 hours after I was supposed to fly out. 
So we get to the airport about three o'clock. We'll land about five o'clock. Perfect timing. We're going straight to the garden for weigh-ins. Okay. Not only do we not make it there, we're delayed by weather for six hours. And you know, I'm a Connor guy. Guess who else showed up at the weigh-ins that day? Oh, that's right. Rhonda Rousey, because she came back to fight Amanda Nunes. Missed that face off as well. Saturday morning, we make it. We go to my, we're at my aunt's house. Oh, I won't even, I won't even tell that part of the story. Saturday morning, we're at my aunt's house. I won't say what happened Friday night because a, a, a fighter called my ex out. So that, that it is what it is. Um, Saturday morning, we're at my aunt's house eating breakfast. But my aunt kind of runs this show with our family. She's like a, a my, uh, my godmother, my aunt, also like a best friend to me. And my ex knows all this. And she goes, hey, babe, are you really going into the fight without me? Knowing damn well my aunt's about to shoot me a look. Knowing damn well it cost my boss or the job or the connection at least a thousand dollars to get into UFC 205 at the garden. And I was like, yeah. So my aunt texts me and goes, You should really reconsider. She goes, I'll take her out. We'll have a girls' night, whatever. And she nudged and budged and every single thing complained, bitched, moaned all day. Tying my shoe. Oh, you tying your shoe to go to the fight? Sneeze. Oh, you clearing your nose so you can smell everything at the at the garden? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Nope. So you know where this is going. About two, three hours before the fight, I call my boss and I go, you got to give my ticket to somebody else. He's like, are you shitting me? This has been worked on for two months. Are you shitting me? Absolutely so I, not. So Connor makes history, right? Like I, I miss all of that. I miss all of that for someone who's not here today. So I tell you that, Kelly, to tell you this, do not fucking miss this show. No, I want to just literally buy one ticket, go, and that's it. By myself, and then hang out with my Series XM buddies that are going to be in Manhattan as well, and that's it. I want to start a hashtag like Kelly268. Kelly2268. Kelly2268. Kelly Kelly like I even entered like... Justin Gaethje partnered with like some like I don't know cannabis thing and for like tickets so like I I applied I texted a bunch of my friends I was like sign up now they all did clearly it didn't work out so I'm gonna have to buy my dumb ass a ticket well because Kelly yeah. needs to go to 68 Kelly to 268 Kelly to 268 I'm in Kelly this has been amazing thank you so much we're almost at half time. I've missed almost an entire half. We had to get to 268. We had like, to. We had the to. And honestly, I, honestly, I wanted to do more today because if I think there's anyone who pulls out the best in me, even if we're just drinking, having a good time, I think it's you. And so, you know, there's a lot of fighters who I have really good conversations with. But overall, if I think there's someone who pulls out the best in me, it's you. And I'm thankful you were here today. Uh, follow her on Twitter at kmurphy25. No underscores. No underscore. Can I can I say this now? Will you will you be back following 268? We have to do 268 recap. We have okay. to. Okay. It's only right. Okay, and we'll only do the 268 recap if you allow me to plead the fifth on 269. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Because I can't. Like I can't. Fine. Um, I'll I'm allow. Gonna throw, I'm gonna throw this random thing out there, and we'll blame this on Miller Lite. I have three favorite YouTube promos of all time. Okay. And they are UFC 205, UFC 214, and UFC 2 whatever Masvidal Usman was the first time. Okay. The promos that the UFC put together for those three, incredible. We're talking con we're talking first fight at, at the Garden, all three title fights. We're talking uh John Jones DC two and like how real that was unfortunately right. it wasn't a wake-up call and then we're talking about like true true like hatred I felt between Masvidal and Usman I need those I need those promos back in my life have you watched Countdown yet for this year this week for 267 
I haven't. Is it good? I haven't watched it. That's why I was asking. I was okay, asking. no, I'm going to. I will watch it. I don't know. Maybe tonight. Okay, so will you promise me within 48 hours of 268 countdown dropping, will you watch it? Within 48 hours of 268 countdown happening? Yeah. Yeah, I will. It happens on Sunday. Just text me that it's out so that I know. Yeah, I'll probably watch it live because I'll say this, and fight fans may not want to hear this. I know Max calls it, Max Holloway calls Vegas, what is it, Ninth Island or whatever, and Vegas is amazing and all this. You do not get better than fights at Madison Square Garden. I'm going. Like, you don't, and that's like, it's almost upsetting me right now because I cannot urge you enough. The biggest regret I have in my life that's any – way shape or form related to this business is i didn't go it's not about who was there and whatever i didn't go to a fight at madison square garden right. i don't want i'm going back that's why here's here's my consolation prize i didn't go to ufc 205 but i went to the press conference and i went to the i guess weigh-ins and press conference the whatever the masvidal diaz uh weigh-ins were and face-offs all that and i got the rock there and he did, if you smell what the rock is cooking and like eight, eight year old Mike was like jumping for joy. <laughs> like that was a highlight of my life, but it's not a fight in the garden. So Kelly, I can't urge you enough. Go to 268. I'm going Kelly to 268. Kelly to 268. <laughs> Kelly, you were amazing as always. Thank you so much for today. And uh, we'll talk after 268. Yes, thank you for having me. We'll talk after Justin Gaethje wipes the floor with Michael Chandler. No, All right, I, I am going to act like you didn't say that. She is Kelly Murphy, again, at KMurphy25 on Twitter. You can catch her on SiriusXM, channel 156, Fight Nation. And uh, mo basically Monday through Friday, 2 to 5 Eastern. Make sure you check her out and check out all the shows she's doing. Please tell Jimmy Smith I said hello. And, if you, and if you want to be like, Jimmy, I threw up in my mouth this week, be like, and he'll be like, why? Like Mike Hamilton does an amazing Nate Diaz impression. Mm -hmm. I'm Shocked like, me. I'm literally here for it. I'm here for it. I'm, you know, I just stop um, it. No, no more. <laughs> because you know, like, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. All right, thank you, Kelly. Thank you to everyone thank who you. watched. Please hit like and subscribe and support Kelly and all her work. Kelly, I'll see you in two weeks on here, and I'm sure I'll be talking to you sooner than that. Oh, uh, Rocky, Rocky.